Act One of The Alchemist by Ben Jonson. This is a LibriVox recording. Subtle, first neighbor, read by Elizabeth Clatt. Face, the housekeeper, read by Todd. Doll Common, read by Ariel Lipshaw. Dapper, a lawyer's clerk, the second officer, read by Nathaniel W. C. Higgins. Drugger, third neighbor, read by Tom Moore. Lovewit, master of the house. Read by Kevin Johnson. Sir Epicure Mammon. Read by Algie Pug. Pertinax Surly, a gamester. Fifth neighbor. First officer. Read by Alan Mapstone. Tribulation Wholesome, a pastor of Amsterdam. Read by Tricia G. Ananias, a deacon. Read by Martin Geeson. Castrol. Read by David Nickel. Dame Pliant, read by Amy Graymore. Fourth Neighbor, read by Charlotte Duckett. Narrator, read by Christine G. Argument. The sickness hot, a master quit for fair. His house in town, and left one servant there. Ease him corrupted, and gave means to know. A cheater and his punk, who now brought low. Leaving their narrow practice, where become cosiness at large and only wanting some house to set up with him their hair contract each for a share and all begin to act much company they draw and much abuse in casting figures telling fortunes news selling off flies flat baldry with the stone till it and day and all in fume are gone prologue fortune that favours fools these two short hours we wish away both for your sakes and ours judging spectators and desire in place to the author justice to ourself but grace our scene is london cause we would make known no country's mirth is better than our own no clime breeds better matter for your whore bored squire impostor many persons more whose manners now called humours feed the stage and which have still been subject for the rage or spleen of comic writers though this pen did never aim to grieve but better men however the age he lives in doth endure the voices that she breeds above their cure but when the wholesome remedies are sweet and in their working gain and profit meet he hopes to find no spirit so much diseased but will with such fair correctives be pleased for here he doth not fear who can apply, If there be any that will sit so nigh. Unto the stream to look what it doth run, They shall find things that think or wish were done. They are so natural follies, but so shown, As even the doers may see, and yet not own. Act One, Scene One A room in Loverwood's house. Enter face, in a captain's uniform, with his sword drawn, and subtle with a vial, quarrelling, and followed by dull common. Believe it, I will. Thy worst! I fought at thee. Have you your wits? Why, gentlemen, for love? Sir, I'll strip you. What to do? Lick figs out at my— Rogue, rogue, out of all your slights. Nay, look ye, sovereign, general, are you madmen? Oh, let the wild sheep loose. I'll gum your silks with good strong water an you come. Will you have the neighbours hear you? Will you betray all? Hark, I hear somebody. Sir, uh, I shall mar all that the tailor has made if you approach. You most notorious whelp, you insolent slave, dare you do this? <gasps> yes, faith, yes, faith. Why, who am I, my mongrel? Who am I? I'll tell you, since you know not yourself. Speak lower, rogue. Yes, you were once, times not long past, the good, honest, plain, livery three-pound thrum that kept your master's worship's house here in the friars for the vacations. Will you be so loud? Since, by my means, translated suburb captain. By your means, Dr. Dog. Within man's memory all this I speak of. 
why i pray you have i been countenanced by you or you by me do but collect sir where i met you first i do not hear well none of this i think it but i shall put you in mind sir at pie corner taking your meal of steam in from cook's stalls where like the father of hunger you did walk piteously costive with your pinched horn nose and your complexion of the roman wash stuck full of black and melancholic worms like powder corn shot at the artillery yard i wish you could advance your voice a little when you went pinned up in the several rags you had raked and picked from dunghills before day your feet in mouldy slippers for your kibes a felt of rug and a thin threaded cloak that scarce would cover your no buttocks so sir when all your alchemy and your algebra your minerals vegetables and animals your conjuring cousining and your dozen of trades could not relieve your core with so much linen as would make you tender but to see a fire i give you countenance credit for your coals your stills your glasses your materials built you a furnace drew you customers advanced all your black arts lent you beside a home to practice in your master's house where you have studied the more thriving skill of bawdry sense yes in your master's house you and the rats there kept possession make it not strange i know you were one could keep the buttery hatch still locked and save the chippings sell the dole beer to aquavitae men the which together with your christmas veils at post and pair your letting out of counters made you a pretty stock some twenty marks and gave you credit to converse with cobwebs here since your mistress's death hath broke up house you might talk softlier rascal no you scarab i'll thunder you in pieces i will teach you how to beware to tempt a fury again that carries tempest in his hand and voice the place has made you valiant no your clothes thou vermin have i ta'en thee out of dung so poor so wretched when no living thing would keep thee company but a spider or worse raised thee from brooms and dust and watering pots sublimed thee and exalted thee and fixed thee in the third region called our state a grace wrought thee to spirit to quintessence with pains would twice have won me the philosopher's work put thee in words and fashion made thee fit for more than ordinary fellowships given thee thy oaths thy quarrelling dimensions thy rules to cheat at horse-race cockpit cards dice or whatever gallant tincture else made thee a second in mine own great art and have i this for thanks do you rebel do you fly out in the projection would you be gone now gentlemen what mean you will you mar all slave thou hadst had no name will you undo yourselves with civil war never had been known past equi clebanum the heat of horse dung underground in cellars or an alehouse darker than deaf john's been lost to all mankind but laundresses and tapsters had not i been do you know who hears you sovereign sir nay general i thought you were civil i shall turn desperate if you grow thus loud and hang thyself i can not hang thee collier and all thy pots and pans in picture i will since thou hast moved me oh this will o'erthrow all write thee up bought in pauls have all thy tricks of cozening with a hollow coal dust scrapings searching for things lost with a sieve and shears erecting figures in your rows of houses taking in of shadows with a glass told in red letters and a face cut for thee worse than gremio ratsies are you sound have you your senses masters i will have a book but barely reckoning thy impostures shall prove a true philosopher's stone to printers away you trench a rascal out you dog leech the vomit of all prisons will you be your own destructions gentlemen still spewed out for lying too heavy on the basket cheater bawd cowherd conjurer cut purse which oh me we are ruined lost have you no more regard to your reputations where's your judgment slight have yet some care of me of your republic away this rock 
I'll bring thee, rogue, within the statute of sorcery, Tricissimo Tertio of Henry the Eighth. I, and perhaps thy neck within a noose, for laundering gold and barbing it. Snatch's face is sword. You'll bring your head within a coxcomb, will you? And you, sir, with your men strew. Dashes Suttles vial out of his hand. Gather it up. S death, you abominable pair of stinkards. Leave off your barking and grow one again, or by the light that shines I'll cut your throats. I'll not be made a prey unto the marshal, for ne'er a snarling dog bolt of you both. Have you together cousined all this while, and all the world, and shall it now be said you've made most courteous shift to cousin yourselves? You will accuse him, you will bring him in within the statute. Who shall take your word? A whoreson, upstart, apocryphal captain, whom not a Puritan in Blackfriars will trust so much as for a feather. And you too will give the cause forsooth. You will insult and claim a primacy in the divisions. You must be chief, as if you only had the powder to project with, and the work were not begun out of equality. The venture tripartite, all things in common, without priority. S death, you perpetual curs! Fall to your couples again, and cousin kindly, and heartily, and lovingly as you should, and lose not the beginning of a term. Or by this hand I shall grow factious too, and take my part, and quit you. Tis his fault. He ever murmurs, and objects his pains, and says the weight of all lies upon him. Why, so it does. How does it? Do not we sustain our parts? Yes, but they are not equal. Why, if your part exceed to-day, I hope ours may to-morrow match it. Ay, they may. May, murmuring mastiff, I and do, death on me, help me to throttle him. Seizes subtle by the throat. Dorothy, Mistress Dorothy, odds precious, I'll do anything, what do you mean? Because of your fermentation and sibation? Not I, by heaven. Your soul and Luna, help me. What I were hanged, then, I'll conform myself. Will you, sir? Do so, then, and quickly. Swear. What should I swear? To leave your faction, sir, and labour kindly in the common work. Let me not breathe if I meant aught beside. I only use those speeches as a spur to him. I hope we need no spurs, sir. Do we? Slid, prove to-day. Who shall sharp best? Agreed. Yes, and work close and friendly. Slight the knot shall grow the stronger for this breach with me. They shake hands. Why so, my good baboons? Shall we go make a sort of sober, scurvy, precise neighbours, that scarce have smiled twice since the king came in, a feast of laughter at our follies? Rascals would run themselves from breath to see me ride. Or you to have but a hole to thrust your heads in, for which you should pay ear rent? No, agree, and may Don Provost ride a feasting long in his old velvet jerkin and stained scarfs, my noble sovereign and worthy general, ere we contribute a new cruel garter to his most worsted worship. Royal doll, spoken like Claridiana and thyself. For which, at supper, thou shalt sit in triumph, and not be styled doll common, but doll proper. Doll singular, the longest cut at night shall draw thee for his doll particular. Bell rings without. Who's that? One rings. To the window, doll. Exit, doll. Pray heaven the master do not trouble us this quarter. Oh, fear not him. While there dies one a week of the plague, he's safe from thinking towards London. Besides, he's safe at his hop-yards now. I had a letter from him. If he do, he'll send such word, for airing of the house, as you shall have sufficient time to quit it, though we break up a fortnight, tis no matter. Re-enter, Doll. Who is it, Doll? A fine young quadling. Oh, my lawyer's clerk. I lighted on him last night, in Holborn, at the dagger. He would have, I told you of him, a familiar, to rifle with at horses, and win cups. Oh, let him in. Stay. Who shall do it? Get you your robes on. I shall meet him as going out. And what shall I do? Not be seen! Away! Exit, Dull. Seem you very reserved. 
Enough. Exit. Aloud and retiring. God be with you, sir. I pray you let him know that I was here. His name is Dapper. I would gladly have stayed, but... Captain, I am here. Who is that? He's come, I think, doctor. Enter Dapper. Good faith, sir. I was going away. In truth, I am very sorry, Captain. But I thought sure I would meet you. Aye, I am very glad. I had a scurvy writ or two to make, and I had lent my watch last night to one that dines to-day at the sheriff's, and so was robbed of my past time. Re-enter Saddle in his velvet cap and gown. Is this the cunning man? This is his worship. Is he a doctor? Yes. And have you broke with him, Captain? Aye. And how? Faith. He does make the matter, sir, so dainty I know not what to say. Not so, good Captain. Would I were fairly rid of it, believe me. Nay, now you grieve me, sir. Why should you wish so? I dare assure you, I'll not be ungrateful. I cannot think you will, sir. But the law is such a thing. And then he says, Reed's matter failing so lately. Reed, he was an ass, and dealt, sir, with a fool. It was a clerk, sir. A clerk? Nay, hear me, sir. You know the law better, I think. I should, sir, and the danger. You know, I shewed the statute to you. You did so. And will I till then? By this hand of flesh, would I might never write good court hand more, if I discover. What do you think of me, that I am a shyess? What's that? The Turk was here. As one would say, do you think I am a Turk? I'll tell the doctor so. Do, good sweet captain. Come, noble doctor. Pray thee let's prevail. This is the gentleman, and he is no Caius. Captain, I have returned you all my answer. I would do much, sir, for your love. But this I neither may nor can. Tut, do not say so. You deal now with a noble fellow, doctor, one that will thank you richly and he is no Caius. Let that, sir, move you. Pray you forbear. He has four angels here. You do me wrong, good sir. Doctor, wherein? To tempt you with these spirits. To tempt my art and love, sir, to my peril. For heaven I scarce can think you are my friend that so would draw me to apparent danger. I draw you, a horse draw you, and a halter, you and your flies together. Nay, good captain. That know no difference of men? Good words, sir. Good deeds, Sir Dr. Dogsmeat. Slight, I bring you no cheating climb of the clouds or carabels, that look as big as five and fifty and flush, and spit out secrets like hot custard. Captain! Nor any melancholic underscribe shall tell the vicar, but a special gentle that is the heir to forty marks a year, consorts with the small poets of the time, is the sole hope of his old grandmother, that knows the law, and writes you six fair hands, is a fine clerk, and has his ciphering perfect, will take his oath of the Greek testament, if need be, in his pocket, and can court his mistress out of Ovid. Nay, dear captain. Did you not tell me so? Yes, but I'd have you use Master Doctor with some more respect. Hang him, proud stag, with his broad velvet head, but for your sake I'd choke, ere I would change an article of breath with such a puck-fist. Come, let's be gone. Going. Pray you let me speak with you. His worship calls you captain. I am sorry I e'er embarked myself in such a business. Nay, good sir, he did call you. Will he take, then? First hear me. Not a syllable, lest you take. Pray you, sir. Upon no terms, but in a sumset. Your humour must be law. He takes the four angels. Why now, sir, talk. Now I dare hear you with mine honour. Speak. So may this gentleman too. Why, sir? Offering to whisper face. No whispering. For heaven you do not apprehend the loss you do yourself in this. Wherein? For what? Marry to be so importunate for one, that when he has it will undo you all. He'll win up all the money in the town. How? Yes, and blow up gamester after gamester, as they do crackers in a puppet play. If I do give him a familiar, give you him all you play for, never set him, for he will have it. You are mistaken, doctor. Why, he does ask one but for cups and horses. A riffling fly, none of your great familiars. Yes, Captain, I would have it for all games. I told you so. Taking Dapper aside. Slight, this is a new business. I understood you, a tame bird, to fly twice in a term or so on Friday nights, when you had left the office for a nag of forty or fifty shillings. Aye, tis true, sir. But I do think now I shall leave the law, and therefore— Why, this change is quite the case. 
Do you think that I dare move him? If you please, sir, all's one to him, I see. What? For that money? I cannot with my conscience, nor should you make the request, methinks. No, sir. I mean to add consideration. Why, then, sir, I'll try. Goes to Subtle. Say that it were for all games, doctor. I say, then, not a mouth shall eat for him at any ordinary, but on the score. That is a gaming mouth, conceive me. Indeed. He'll draw you all the treasure of the realm, if it be set him. Speak you this from art? Ay, sir, and reason, too, the ground of art. He is of the only best complexion. The queen of fairy loves. What? Is he? Peace'll overhear you. Sir, should she but see him. What? Do not you tell him. Will he win at cards, too? Ah, oh, the spirits of dead Holland, living Isaac, you'd swear were in him. Such a vigorous luck as cannot be resisted. Slight, he'll put six of your gallants to a cloak indeed. A strange success that some man shall be born to. He hears you, man. Sir, I'll not be ungrateful. Faith, I have confidence in his good nature. You hear, he says he will not be ungrateful. Why, as you please, my venture follows yours. Troth, do it, doctor. Think him trusty, and to make him, he may make us both happy in an hour. Win some five thousand pound, and send us to it. Believe it, and I will, sir. And you shall, sir. Takes him aside. You have heard all? No, what was't? Nothing I, sir. Nothing? A little, sir. Well, a rare star reigned at your birth. At mine, sir, no. The doctor swears that you are. Nay, captain, you'll tell all now. Allied to the queen of fairy. Who? That I am? Believe it, no such matter. Yes, and that you were born with a call on your head. Who says so? Come, you know it well enough, though you dissemble it. If face I do not, you are mistaken. How? Swear you by your fact, and in a thing so known unto the doctor? How shall we, sir, trust you in the other matter? Can we ever think, when you have won five or six thousand, you'll send us shares in it by this rate? By Jove, sir, I'll win ten thousand pound, and send you half. If face is no oath... No, no, he did but jest. Go to. Go thank the doctor. He's your friend to take it so. I thank his worship. So, another angel. Must I? Mustn't you? Slight, what else is thanks? Will you be trivial, doctor? Dapper gives him the money. When must he come for his familiar? Shall I not have it with me? Oh, good sir, there must a world of ceremonies pass. You must be bathed and fumigated first. Besides, the Queen of Fairy does not rise till it be noon. Not if she danced to-night. And she must bless it. Did you never see her royal grace yet? Whom? Your aunt of fairy. Not since she kissed him in the cradle, Captain. I can resolve you that. Well, see her grace what e'er it cost you. For a thing that I know, it will be somewhat hard to compass. But, however, see her. You are made, believe it, if you can see her. Her grace is a lone woman, and very rich. And if she takes a fancy, she will do strange things. See her at any hand. Slit, she may have to leave you all she has. It is the doctor's fear. How wilt be done, then? Let me alone. Take you no thought. Do you but say to me, Captain, I'll see her grace. Captain, I'll see her grace. Enough. Knocking within. Who's there? Anon. Aside to face. Conduct him forth by the back way. Sir, against one o'clock prepare yourself. Till when you must be fasting. Only take three drops of vinegar in at your nose, two at your mouth, and one at either ear. Then bathe your fingers' ends, and wash your eyes, to sharpen your five senses, and cry, hum, thrice, and then buzz as often, and then come. Exit. Can you remember this? I want you. Well, then, away. It is but your bestowing some twenty nobles among her grace's servants, and put on a clean shirt. You do not know what grace her grace may do you in clean linen. Exaunt face and dapper. Within. Come in. Good wives, I pray you forbear me now. Troth, I can do you no good till afternoon. Re-enters, followed by Drugger. What is your name, say you? Abel Drugger? Yes, sir. A seller of tobacco? Yes, sir. Hm. Free of the grocers? Aye, and it please you. Well, your business, Abel? This, and it please your worship. I am a young beginner, and am building of a new shop, and like your worship, just at corner of a street. Here's the plot on it. And I would know by art, sir, of your worship, which way I should make my door, by necromancy, and where my shelves, and which should be for boxes, and which for pots. I would be glad to thrive, sir, and I was wished to your worship by a gentleman, one Captain Face, that says you know men's planets, and their good angels, and their bad. I do, 
if i do see them re-enter face what my honest abel thou art well met here troth sir i was speaking just as your worship came here of your worship i pray you speak for me to master doctor he shall do anything doctor do you hear this is my friend abel an honest fellow he lets me have good tobacco and he does not sophisticate it with sacklees or oil nor washes it in muscatel and grains nor buries it in gravel underground wrapped up in greasy leather or pissed clouts but keeps it in fine lily pots that open smell like a conserve of roses or french beans he has maple block his silver tongs winchester pipes and a fire of juniper a neat spruce honest fellow and no goldsmith he is a fortunate fellow that i am sure on already sir have you found it lo thee abel and in a right way toward riches sir this summer he will be of the clothing of his company and next spring called to the scarlet to spend what he can what and so little beard sir you must think he may have a receipt to make hair come but he'll be wise preserve his youth and fine for it his fortune looks for him another way slid doctor how canst thou know this so soon i am amused at that by a rule captain in metaposcopy which i do work by a certain star o the forehead which you see not your chestnut or your olive-coloured face does never fail in your long ear doth promise i knew it by certain spots too in his teeth and on the nail of his mercurial finger which finger's that his little finger look you were born upon a wednesday yes indeed sir the thumb in chiromancy we give venus the forefinger to jove the midst to saturn the ring to sol the least to mercury who is the lord sir of his horoscope this house of life being libra which foreshowed he should be a merchant and should trade with balance why this is strange is it not honest nab there is a ship now coming from ormus that shall yield him such a commodity of drugs pointing to the plan this is the west and this the south yes sir and those are your two sides ay sir make me your door then south your broadside west and on the east side of your shop aloft write mathlai tamiel and baraborat upon the north part rael velel thiel they are the names of those mercurial spirits that do fright flies from boxes yes sir and beneath your threshold bury me a lodestone to draw in gallants that wear spurs the rest they'll seem to follow that's a secret nab and on your stall a puppet with a vice and a court fucus to call city dames you shall deal much with minerals sir i have at home already ay i know you have arsenic vitriol sal tartar argyle alkali cinnaber i know all this fellow captain will come in time to be a great distiller and give a say i will not say directly but very fair at the philosopher's stone why how now abel is this true aside to face good captain what must i give nay i'll not counsel thee thou hearest what well he says spend what thou canst thou art like to come to i would give him a crown a crown and toward such a fortune heart thou shalt rather give him a shop no gold about thee yes i have a portague i have kept this half year out on thee nab slight there was such an offer shalt keep it no longer i'll give it to him for thee doctor nab prays your worship to drink this and swears he will appear more grateful as your skill does raise him in the world i would entreat another favour of his worship what isn't nab but to look over sir my almanac and cross out my ill days that i may neither bargain nor trust upon them that he shall nab leave it it shall be done against afternoon and a direction for his shelves now nab art thou well pleased nab thanks sir both your worships away exit drugger why now you smoky persecutor of nature now do you see that something to be done beside your breech coal and your corrosive waters your crosslets crucibles and corkabites you must have stuff brought home to you to work on and yet you think i am at no expense in searching out these veins than following them then trying them out for god my intelligence costs me more money than my share oft comes to in these rare works you are pleasant sir re-enter doll how now what says my dainty dolkin yonder fishwife will not away 
and there's your giantess, the board of Lambeth. Hard, I cannot speak with them. Not a fore night, I have told them in a voice through the trunk, like one of your familiars. But I have spied Sir Epicure Mammon. Where? Coming along, at far end of the lane. Slow of his feet, but earnest of his tongue to one that's with him. Face, go you and shift. Exit face. Doll, you must presently make ready too. Why, what's the matter? Oh, I did look for him with the sun's rising. Marvel he could sleep. This is the day I am to perfect for him this magisterium, our great work, the stone, and yield it made into his hands, of which he has this month talked as he were possessed. And now he's dealing pieces on to way. Methinks I see him entering ordinaries, dispensing for the pox and plaguey houses, reaching his dose, walking moorfields for lepers, and offering citizens' wives pomander bracelets as his preservative, made of the elixir, searching the spittle to make old boards young, and the highways for beggars to make rich. I see no end of his labours. He will make nature ashamed of her long sleep, when art, who's but a step-dame, shall do more than she, in her best love to mankind, ever could. If his dream lasts, he'll turn the age to gold. Exeunt. End of Act One. Act Two of The Alchemist by Ben Jonson. This is a LibriVox recording. Act Two, Scene One. An outer room in Lovewit's house. Enter Sir Epicure Mammon and Surly. Come on, sir. Now you set your foot on shore in Novo Orbe. Here's the rich Peru, and there within, sir, are the golden mines, great Solomon's Ophir. He was sailing to it three years, but we have reached it in ten months. This is the day wherein, to all my friends, I will pronounce the happy word, Be rich! This day you shall be spectatissimi. You shall no more deal with the hollow die or the frail card, no more be a charge of keeping the livery punk for the young heir that must seal at all hours in his shirt. No more, if he deny, have him beaten to it, as he is that brings him the commodity. No more shall thirst of satin, or the covetous hunger of velvet entrails for a rude spun cloak, to be displayed at Madame Augusta's, make the sons of sword and hazard fall before the golden calf, and on their knees whole knights commit idolatry with wine and trumpets, or go a feasting after drum and ensign. No more of this. You shall start up young viceroys, and have your punks and punketees, my surly, and unto thee I speak it first. Be rich. Where is my subtle? There? Within, ho! Within. Sir, he'll come to you by and by. That is his fire drake, his lungs, his zephyrus, he that puffs his curls, till he firk nature up in her own centre. You are not faithful, sir. This night I'll change all that is metal in my house to gold, and early in the morning will I send to all the plumbers and the pewterers and buy their tin and lead up, and to Lothbury for all the copper. What? And turn that too? Yes, and I'll purchase Devonshire and Cornwall, and make them perfect indies. You admire now? No faith. But when you see the effects of the great medicine, of which one part projected on a hundred of mercury, or Venus, or the moon, shall turn it to as many of the sun, nay, to a thousand, so ad infinitum, you will believe me. Yes, when I see it I will, 
and if my eyes do cousin me so and i giving them no occasion sure i'll have a whore shall piss them out next day ha oh, why do you think i fable with you i assure you he that has once the flower of the sun the perfect ruby which we call elixir not only can do that but by its virtue can confer honour love respect long life give safety valour yea and victory to whom he will in eight and twenty days i'll make an old man of fourscore a child no doubt he's that already nay i mean restore his years renew him like an eagle to the fifth age make him get sons and daughters young giants as our philosophers have done the ancient patriarchs afore the flood but taking once a week on a knife's point the quantity of a grain of mustard of it become stout masers and beget young cupids the decayed vestals of picked hatch would thank you that keep the fire alive there tis the secret of nature naturalized against all infections cures all diseases coming of all causes a month's grief in a day a year's in twelve and of what age soever in a month past all the doses of your drugging doctors i'll undertake withal to fright the plague out of the kingdom in three months and i'll be bound the players shall sing your praises then without their poets sir i'll do it meantime i'll give away so much unto my man shall serve the whole city with preservative weekly each house his days and at the rate as he that built the waterworks does with water you are incredulous faith i have a humour i would not willingly be gulled your stone cannot transmute me patrax my sally will you believe antiquity records i'll show you a book where moses and his sister and solomon have written of the art ay and a treatise penned by adam how of the philosopher's stone and in high dutch did adam write sir in high dutch he did which proves it was the primitive tongue what paper on cedar board oh that indeed they say will last against worms tis like your irish wood against cobwebs i've a piece of jason's fleece too which was no other than a book of alchemy a ritty large sheepskin a good fat ram vellum such was pythagoras's thigh pandora's tub and all that fable of medea's charms the manner of our work the bulls our furnace still breathing fire our argent vive the dragon the dragon's teeth mercury sublimate that keeps the whiteness hardness and the biting and they are gathered into jason's helm the alembic and then sowed in mars his field and thence sublime so often till they're fixed both this the hesperian garden cadmus's story jove's shower the boon of midas argus's eyes boccaccio his demogorgon thousands more all abstract riddles of our stone and to face as a servant how now do we succeed is our day come and holds it the evening will set red upon you sir you have color for it crimson the red ferment has done his office three hours hence prepare you to see projection pertinax by surly again i say to thee aloud be rich this day thou shalt have ingots and to-morrow give lords the affront is it my zephyrus right blushes the bolt's head like a wench with child sir that were but now discovered to her master excellent witty lungs my only care where to get stuff enough now to project on this towel will not half serve me no sir by the covering off the churches that's true yes let them stand bare as do their auditory or cap them new with shingles no good thatch 
Such will lie light upon the rafters. Lungs? Lungs, I will manumit thee from the furnace. I will restore thee thy complexion, puff, lost in the embers, and repair this brain, hurt with the fume of the metals. I have blown, sir, hard for your worship, thrown by many a coal, when twas not beech, weighed those I put in, just to keep their heat still even. Those bleared eyes have waked to read your several colours, sir, of the pear citron, the green lion, the crow, the peacock's tail, the plumed swan. And lastly, thou hast described the flower, the sanguis anyi? Yes, sir. Where's master? At his prayers, sir. He, good man, he's doing his devotions for the success. Lungs, I will set a period to all thy labours. Thou shalt be the master of my seraglio. Good, sir. But do you hear? I'll gild you, lungs. Yes, sir. For I do mean to have a list of wives and concubines equal with Solomon, who had the stone alike with me, and I will make me a back with the elixir that shall be as tough as Hercules to encounter fifty a night. Thou sure thou sawest it blood? Both blood and spirit, sir. I will have all thy beds blown up, not stuffed. Down is too hard, and then mine oval room filled with such pictures as Tiberius took from Elephantus and dull Aretine, but coldly imitated. Then my glasses, cut in more subtle angles, to disperse and multiply the figures as I walk naked between my succubae. My mists I'll have of perfume, vapoured about the room, to lose ourselves in, and my baths like pits to fall into, from whence we will come forth and roll us dry in gossamer and roses. Is it arrived at Ruby, where I spy a wealthy citizen, or a rich lawyer, have a sublimed pure wife? Unto that fellow I'll send a thousand pound to be my cuckold. And I shall carry it? No, I'll have no boards but fathers and mothers. They will do it best, best of all others. And my flatterers shall be the pure and gravest of divines that I can get for money. My mere fools, eloquent burgesses, and then my poets, the same that writ so subtly of the fart whom I will entertain still for that subject. The few that would give out themselves to be caught in town stallions, and each where belie ladies who are known most innocent for them, those will I beg to make me eunuchs of, and they shall fad me with ten estrich tails apiece, made in a plume to gather wind. We will be brave, Puff, now we have the medicine. My meat shall all come in, in Indian shells, dishes of agate set in gold, and studded with emeralds, sapphires, hyacinths, and rubies, the tongues of carps, dormice, and camel's heels, boiled in a spirit of sol, and dissolved pearl, aspicius's diet, gainst the epilepsy. And I will eat these broths with spoons of amber, headed with diamond and carbuncle. My footboy shall eat pheasants, carved sabons, knots, godwits, lampreys. I myself will have the beards of Babel served instead of salads, oiled mushrooms, and the swelling, unctuous paps of a fat, pregnant sow, newly cut off, dressed with an exquisite and poignant sauce, for which I'll say unto my cook, there's gold go forth and be a knight sir i'll go look a little how it heightens exit my shirts i'll have of taffeta sarsnet soft and light as cobwebs and for all my other arraignment it shall be as might provoke the persian were he to teach the world riot anew my gloves of fishes and bird skins perfumed with gums of paradise and eastern air and do you think to have the stone with this? No, I do think to have all this with the stone. Why, I have heard it must be Homo Frugi, a pious, holy, and religious man, one free from mortal sin, a very virgin. 
that brings it sir he is so but i buy it my venture brings it me he honest wretch a notable superstitious good soul has worn his knees bare and his slippers bold with prayer and fasting for it and sir let him do it alone for me still here he comes not a profane word afore him tis poison enter subtle good morrow father gentle son good morrow and to your friend there what is he is with you a heretic that i did bring along in hope sir to convert him son i doubt you are covetous that thus you meet your time in the just point prevent your day at morning this argue something worthy of a fear of importune and carnal appetite take heed you do not cause the blessing leave you with your ungoverned haste i should be sorry to see my labours even now at perfection got by long watching and large patience not prosper where my love and zeal hath placed them which heaven i call to witness with yourself to whom i have poured my thoughts in all my ends have looked no way but unto public good to pious uses and dear charity have grown a prodigy with men wherein if you my son should now prevaricate and to your own particular lusts employ so great and catholic a bliss be sure a curse will follow yea and overtake your subtle and most secret ways i know sir you shall not need to fear me i but come to have you confute this gentleman who is indeed sir somewhat costive of belief towards your stone would not be gold well son all that i can convince him in is this the work is done bright sol is in his robe we have a medicine of the triple soul the glorified spirit thanks be to heaven and make us worthy of it ulin spiegel within on on sir look well to the register and let your heat still lessen by degrees to the alliadels within yes sir did you look on the bolt's head yet within which on d sir ay what's the complexion within whitish infuse vinegar to draw his volatile substance and his tincture let the water in glass e be filtered and put into the gripe's egg loot him well and leave him closed in balneo within i will sir what a brave language is here next to canting i have another work you never saw son that three days since passed the philosopher's wheel in the lent heat of athenor and become the sulphur of nature but uh, tis for me what need you you have enough in you that is perfect oh but why this is covetous no i assure you i shall employ it all in pious uses founding of colleges and grammar schools marrying young virgins building hospitals and now and then a church re-enter face how now sir please you shall i not change the filter marry yes and bring me the complexion of glass b exit face uh, have you another yes son were i assured your piety were firm we would not want the means to glorify it but i hope the best i mean to tinct c in sand heat to-morrow and give him imbibition of white oil no sir of red f is come over the helm too i thank my maker in s mary's bath and shows lack virginis blessed be heaven i sent you of his faeces there calcined out of that calx i have won the salt of mercury by pouring on your rectified water yes and reverberating in athenor re-enter face how now what colour says it the ground black sir that's your crow's head your coxcombs is it not no tis not perfect would it were the crow that work wants something aside oh i looked for this the haze a pitchin are you sure you loosed them in their own menstrue yes sir and then married them and put them in a bolt's head ripped to digestion according as you bade me when i set the liquor of mars to circulation in the same heat the process then was right yes by the token sir the retort break 
and what was saved was put into the pelican and signed with Hermes' seal. I think twas so. We should have a new amalgama. Aside. Oh, this ferret is rank as any polecat. But I care not. Let him even die. We have enough beside an embryon. He has his white shirt on. Yes, sir, he's ripe for insuration. He stands warm in his ash fire. I would not you should let any die now, if I might counsel, sir. For luck's sake to the rest, it is not good. He says right. Aside. Aye, are you bolted? Nay, I know it, sir. I have seen the ill fortune. What is some three ounces of fresh materials? Is it no more? No more, sir. Of gold, to Algamine with some six of mercury. Away, here's money. What will serve? Ask him, sir. How much? Give him nine pound. Uh, you may give him ten. Yes, twenty, and be cousined, do. There it is. Gives face the money. This needs not, but that you will have it so, to see conclusions of all. For two of our inferior works are at fixation, a third is in ascension. Go your ways. Have you set the oil of Luna in Chemia? Yes, sir. And the philosopher's vinegar? Aye. Exit. We shall have a salad. When do you make projection? Son, be not hasty. I exalt our medicine by hanging him in balneo vaporoso and giving him solution. Then congeal him, and then dissolve him, and then again congeal him. For look how oft I iterate the work, so many times I add unto his virtue. As if at first one ounce convert a hundred, after his second loose he'll turn a thousand, his third solution ten, his fourth a hundred, after his fifth a thousand thousand ounces of any imperfect metal into pure silver or gold, in all examinations as good as any of the natural mine. Get you your stuff here against afternoon, your brass, your pewter, and your andirons. Not those of iron? Yes, you may bring them too. We'll change all metals. I believe you in that. Then I may send my spits. Yes, and your racks. And dripping pans and pot hangers and hooks, shall he not? If he please. To be an ass. How, sir? This gentleman you must bear withal. I told you he had no faith. And little hope, sir, but much less charity, should I gull myself. Why, what have you observed, sir, in our art seems so impossible? But your whole work no more, that you should hatch gold in a furnace, sir, as they do eggs in Egypt. Sir, do you believe that eggs are hatched so? If I should. Why, I think that the greater miracle. No egg but differs from a chicken more than metals in themselves. That cannot be. The egg's ordained by nature to that end, and is a chicken in potentia. The same we say of lead and other metals, which would be gold, if they had time. And that our art doth further. Ay, for twere absurd to think that nature in the earth breed gold perfect in the instant. Something went before. There must be remote matter. Ay, what is that? Marry, we say. Ay, now it heats. Stand, father, pound him to dust. It is of the one part a humid exhalation, which we call material liquida, or the unctuous water. On the other part, a certain crass and vicious portion of earth, both which, concorporate, do make the elementary matter of gold, which is not yet propria materia, but common to all metals and all stones. For where it is forsaken of that moisture, and hath more dryness, it becomes a stone. Where it retains more of the humid fatness, it turns to sulphur, or to quicksilver, who are the parents of all other metals. Nor can this remote matter suddenly progress so from extreme unto extreme as to grow unto gold, and leap o'er all the means. Nature doth first beget the imperfect, then proceeds she to the perfect. Of that airy and oily water, mercury is engendered, sulphur of the fat and earthy part, the one which is the last supplying the place of male, the other of the female in all metals. Some do believe hermaphrodeity that both do act and suffer. But these two make the rest ductile, malleable, extensive. And even in gold they are, for we do find seeds of them by our fire and gold in them, and can produce the species of each metal more perfect thence than nature doth in earth.
besides, who doth not see in daily practice, art can beget bees, hornets, beetles, wasps, out of the carcasses and dung of creatures, yea, scorpions of an herb being rightly placed. And these are living creatures, far more perfect and excellent than metals. Well said, father. Nay, if he take you in hand, sir, with an argument, he'll bray you in a mortar. Pray you, sir, stay. Rather than I'll be brayed, sir, I'll believe that alchemy is a pretty kind of game, somewhat like tricks of the cards to cheat a man with charming. Sir? What else are all your terms, whereon no one of your writers grees with other? Of your elixir, your lac virginis, your stone, your medicine, and your chrysosperm, your sal, your sulphur, your mercury, your oil of height, your tree of life, your blood, your march site, your tutti, your magnesia, your toad, your crow, your dragon, and your panther, your sun, your moon, your firmament, your adrop, your lato, azoc, zernich, chibrite, hoiturit, and then your red man, and your white woman, and all your broths, your menstrues, and materials of piss and eggshell, women's terms and men's blood, hair of the head, burnt clouts, chalk, murds and clay, powder of bones, scalings of iron, glass, and worlds of other strange ingredients would burst a man to name. And all these named intending but one thing, which art our writers used to obscure their art. Sir, so I told him, because the simple idiot should not learn it and make it vulgar. Was not all the knowledge of the Egyptians writ in mystic symbols? Speak not the scriptures oft in parables? Are not the choicest fables of the poets that were the fountains and first springs of wisdom wrapped in perplexed allegories? I urged that, and cleared to him, that Sisyphus was damned to roll the ceaseless stone only because he would have made owls common. A pace at the door. Oh, is this? Sprecious! What do you mean? Go in, good lady, let me entreat you. Doll retires. Where's this varlet? Re enter face. Sir? You very knave, do you use me thus? Where in, sir? Go in and see you, traitor. Go. Exit face. Who is it, sir? Nothing, sir, nothing. What's the matter, good sir? I have not seen you thus distempered. Who is't? All arts have still had, sir, their adversaries, but ours the most ignorant. Re enter face. What now? Twas not my fault, sir. She would speak with you. Would she, sir? Follow me. Exit. Stopping him. Stay, lungs. I dare not, sir. Stay, man. What is she? A lord's sister, sir. How? Pray thee, stay. She's mad, sir, and sent hither. He'll be mad, too. I warrant thee. Why send hither? Sir, to be cured. Within. Why, rascal? Lo, you. Here, sir. Exit. For God, a bradamante, a brave piece. Hark, this is a bawdy house. I'll be burnt else. Oh, by this light, no. Do not wrong him. He's too scrupulous that way. It is his vice. No, he's a rare physician, do him right, an excellent Paracelsian, and has done strange cures with mineral physic. He deals all with spirits, he. He will not hear a word of Galen, or his tedious recipes. Re-enter face. How now, lungs? Softly, sir, speak softly. I meant to have told your worship all. This must not hear. No, he will not be gulled. Let him alone. You are very right, sir. She is a most rare scholar, and has gone mad with studying Broughton's works. If you but name a word touching the Hebrew, she falls into her fit, and will discourse so learnedly of genealogies as you would run mad too to hear her, sir. How might one do it to have conference with her lungs? Oh, diverse have run mad upon the conference. I do not know, sir. I am sent in haste to fetch a vial. Be not gold, sir mammon. Wherein? Pray ye, be patient. 
yes as you are and trust confederate knaves and bawds and whores you are too foul believe it come here ulen one word i dare not in good faith going stay knave he is extremely angry that you saw her sir drink that gives him money what is she when she's out of her fit oh the most affable creature sir so merry so pleasant she'll mount you up like quicksilver over the helm and circulate like oil a very vegetable discourse of state of mathematics body anything is she in no way accessible no means no trick to give a man a taste of her wit or so within Ulin. i'll come to you again sir exit surely i did not think one of your breeding would reduce parsonages of worth sir epicure your friend to use yet still loath to be gulled i do not like your philosophical boards their stone is lechery enough to pay for without this bait heart you abuse yourself i know the lady and her friends and means the original of this disaster her brother has told me all and yet you ne'er saw her till now oh yes but i forgot i have believe it one of the treacherousest memories i do think of all mankind what call you her brother my lord he will not have his name known now i think on't a very treacherous memory on my faith tut if you have it not about you pass it till we meet next nay by this hand it is true his one i honour and my noble friend and i respect his house heart can it be that a grave sir a rich that has no need a wise sir too at other times should thus with his own oaths and arguments make hard means to gull himself and this be your elixir your lapis mineralis and your lunary give me your honest trick yes at primero or gleek and take your lutum sapientis and your menstrum simplex i'll have gold before you and with less danger of the quicksilver or the hot sulphur re-enter face here's one from captain face sir too surly desires you meet him in the temple church some half hour hence and upon earnest business sir whispers mammon if you wish to quit us now and come again within two hours you shall have my master busy examining all the works and i will steal you in under the party that you may see her converse sir may i say you'll meet the captain's worship sir i will walks aside but bung a tourney and to a second purpose now i'm sure it is a bawdy house i'll swear it were the marshal here to thank me the naming of this commander doth confirm it don face why he's the most authentic dealer in these commodities the superintendent of all the quainter traffickers in town he is their visitor and doth appoint who lies with whom and at what hour what price which gown and in what smock what for what tire him will i prove by a third person to find the subtleties of this dark labyrinth which if i do discover dear sir mammon i'll give your poor friend leave though no philosopher to laugh for you that are tis thought shall weep sir he does pray you'll not forget i will not sir sir epicure i shall leave you exit i follow you straight but do so good sir to avoid suspicion this gentleman has a parlous head but wilt thou ulen be constant to thy promise as my life sir and wilt thou insinuate what i am and praise me and say i am a noble fellow oh what else sir and that you'll make her royal with a stone an empress and yourself king of bantam wilt thou do this will i sir lungs my lungs i love thee send your stuff sir that my master may busy himself about projection thou hast witched me rogue take go gives him money your jack and all sir thou art a villain i will send my jack and the weights too slave i could bite thine ear away thou dost not care for me not i sir come i was born to make thee my good weasel set thee on a bench and have thee twirl a chain with the best lord's vermin of em all away sir account 
nay a count palatine good sir go shall not advance thee better no nor faster exit re enter subtle and dull has he bit has he bit and swallowed too my subtle i have given him line and now he plays i faith and shall we twitch him through both the gills a wench is a rare bait in which a man's no sooner taken but he straight firks mad doll my lord what's his um sister you must now bear yourself statelish oh let me alone i'll not forget my race i warrant you i'll keep my distance laugh and talk aloud have all the tricks of a proud scurvy lady and be as rude as her woman well said sanguine but will he send his andirons his jack too and iron's shoeing horn i have spoke to him well i must not lose my wary gamester yonder oh monsieur caution that will not be gulled ay if i can strike a fine hook into him now the temple church there i have cast mine angle well pray for me i'll about it knocking without what more gudgeons doll scout scout doll goes to the window stay face you must go to the door pray god it be my anabaptist who is't doll i know him not he looks like a gold endman odd so tis he he said he would send what call you him the sanctified elder that should deal for mammon's jack and andirons let him in stay help me off first with my gown exit face with a gown away madam to your withdrawing chamber exit doll now in a new tune new gesture but old language this fellow is sent from one negotiates with me about the stone too for the holy brethren of amsterdam the exiled saints that hope to raise their discipline by it i must use him in some strange fashion now to make him admire me enter ananias aloud where is my drudge re-enter face sir take away the recipient and rectify your menstruary from the phlegma then pour it on the sol and the cucurbite and let them macerate together uh, yes sir and save the ground no terra damnata must not have entrance in the work who are you a faithful brother if it please you what's that a lullianist a ripley phileus artis can you sublime and dulcify calcine know you the sapor pontic sapor stipic or what is homogene or heterogene i understand no heathen language truly heathen you nipper doling is ours sacra or chrysopoeia or spagyrica or the pamphysic or panarchic knowledge a heathen language heathen greek i take it how heathen greek all's heathen but the hebrew sirrah my varlet stand you forth and speak to him like a philosopher answer in the language name the vexations and the martyrizations of metals in the work sir putrefaction solution ablution sublimation cohabation calcination serration and fixation this is heathen greek to you now and when comes vivification after mortification what's cohobation tis the pouring on your aqua regis and then drawing him off to the trine circle of the seven spheres what's the proper passion of metals malleation what's your ultimum supplicium ori antimonium this is heathen greek to you and what's your mercury a very fugitive he will be gone sir how know you him by his viscosity his oleosity and his susceptibility how do you sublime him with the calce of eggshells white marble talc your magisterium now what's that shifting sir your elements dry into cold cold into moist moist into hot hot into dry this is heathen greek to you still your lapis philosophicus tis a stone and not a stone a spirit a soul and a body which if you do dissolve it is dissolved if you coagulate it is coagulated if you make it to fly it flieth enough exit face this is heathen greek to you what are you sir please you a servant of the exiled brethren that deal with widows and with orphans goods and make a just account unto the saints a deacon oh you are sent from master wholesome your teacher from tribulation wholesome 
our very zealous pastor good i have some orphans goods to come here of what kind sir pewter and brass and irons and kitchenware metals that we must use our medicine on wherein the brethren may have a penny worth for ready money were the orphans parents sincere professors why do you ask because we fare not to deal justly and give in truth their utmost value slid you'd cousin else and if their parents were not of the faithful i will not trust you now i think on it till i have talked with your pastor have you brought money to buy more coals no surely no how so the brethren bid me say unto you sir surely they will not venture any more till they may see projection how you have had for the instruments as bricks and loam and glasses already thirty pound and for materials they say some ninety more and they have heard since that one at heidelberg made it of an egg and a small paper of pin-dust what's your name my name is ananias out the varlet that cozened the apostles hence away flee mischief had your holy consistory no name to send me of another sound than wicked ananias send your elders hither to make atonement for you quickly and give me satisfaction or out goes the fire and down the alembics in the furnace piger henricus or what not thou wretch both sericon and bufo shall be lost tell them all hope of rooting out the bishops of the anti-christian hierarchy shall perish if they stay threescore minutes the aquiety terriety and sulphuriety shall run together again and all shall be annulled thou wicked ananias exit ananias <laughs> this'll fetch em and make them haste towards their gulling moor a man must deal like a rough nurse and fright those that are froward to an appetite re enter face in his uniform followed by a drugger he is busy with his spirits but will upon him how now what mates what byards have we here i told you he would be furious sir here's nab has brought you another piece of gold to look on we must appease him give it to me and praise you you would devise what is it nab a sign sir ah a good lucky one a thriving sign doctor i was devising now slight do not say so he will repent he gave you any more what say you to his constellation doctor the balance no that way is stale and common a townsman born in taurus gives the bull or the bull's head in aries the ram a poor device no i will have his name formed in some mystic character whose radii striking the senses of the passers-by shall by a virtual influence breed affections that may result upon the part he owns it as thus nab he shall have a bell that's abel and by it standing one whose name is d in a rug gown there's d and rug that's drug and right anent him a dog snarling er there's drug er abel drug er that's his sign and here's now mystery and hieroglyphic. Abel, thou art made. Sir, I do thank his worship. Six of thy legs more will not do it, Nab. He has brought you a pipe of tobacco, doctor. Yes, sir. I have another thing I would impart. Out with it, Nab. Sir, there is lodged hard by me a rich young widow. Good. A bonaroba? But nineteen at the most. Very good, Abel mary she's not in fashion yet she wears a hood but it stands a cop no matter abel and i do now and then give her a fucus what dost thou deal nab i did tell you captain and physic too sometimes sir for which she trusts me with all her mind she's come up here of purpose to learn the fashion good his match too on nab and she does strangely long to know her fortune Odds lid, Nab, send her to the doctor hither. Yes, I have spoke to her of his worship already, but she's afraid it will be blown abroad and hurt her marriage. Hurt it? Tis the way to heal it. If twert hurt, twould make it more follow and sought. Nab, thou shalt tell her this. She'll be more known, more talked of, and your widows are ne'er of any price till they be famous. Their honour is their multitude of suitors. 
send her it may be thy good fortune what thou dost not know no sir she'll never marry under a knight her brother has made a vow what and dost thou despair my little nab knowing what the doctor has set down for thee and seeing so many of the city dubbed one glass of thy water with a madam i know will have it done nab what's your brother a knight no sir a gentleman newly warm in his land sir scarce cold in his one-and-twenty that does govern his sister here and is a man himself of some three thousand a year and is come up to learn to quarrel and to live by his wits and will go down again and die in the country how to quarrel yes sir to carry quarrels as gallants do to manage them by line slid nab the doctor is the only man in christendom for him he has made a table with mathematical demonstrations touching the art of quarrels he will give him an instrument to quarrel by go bring them both him and his sister and for thee with her the doctor happily may persuade go to shall give his worship a new damask suit upon the premises oh good captain he shall he is the honestest fellow doctor stay not no offers bring the damask and the parties i'll try my power sir and i will too nab tis good tobacco this what is an ounce he'll send you a pound doctor oh no he will do it it is the goodest soul abel about it thou shalt know more anon away be gone exit abel a miserable rogue and lives with cheese and has the worms that was the cause indeed why he came now he dealt with me in private to get medicine for them and shall sir this works a wife a wife for one on us my dear subtle will e'en draw lots and he that fails shall have the more in goods the other has in tail rather the less for she may be so light she may want grains ay or be such a burden a man would scarce endure her for the whole faith best let's see her first and then determine content but dole may have no breath on't mum away you to your surly yonder catch him pray god i have not stayed too long i fear it exeunt end of act two Act three of The Alchemist by Ben Jonson. Act three, scene one. The lane before Lovett's house. Enter Tribulation Wholesome and Ananias. These chastisements are common to the saints, and such rebukes we of the separation must bear with willing shoulders, as the trials sent forth to tempt our frailties in pure zeal i do not like the man he is a heathen and speaks the language of canaan truly i think him a profane person indeed he bears the visible mark of the beast in his forehead and for his stone it is a work of darkness and with philosophy blinds the eyes of man good brother we must bend unto all means that may give furtherance to the holy cause oh, which is cannot the sanctified cause should have a sanctified cause not always necessary the children of perdition are oft times made instruments even of the greatest works beside we should give somewhat to man's nature the place he lives in still about the fire and fume of metals that intoxicate the brain of man and make him prone to passion where have you greater atheists than your cooks or more profane or choleric than your glassmen more anti-christian than your bell founders what makes the devil so devilish i would ask you satan our common enemy but his being perpetually about the fire and boiling brimstone and arsenic we must give i say unto the motives and the stirrers up of humours in the blood it may be so when as the work is done the stone is made this heat of his may turn into a zeal and stand up for the beauteous discipline against the menstruous cloth and rag of rome we must await his calling and the coming of the good spirit you did fault to upbraid him with the brethren's blessing of heidelberg 
weighing what need we have to hasten on the work for the restoring of the silenced saints which ne'er will be but by the philosopher's stone and so a learned elder one of scotland assured me arum potabile being the only medicine for the civil magistrate to incline him to a feeling of the cause and must be daily used in the disease i have not edified more truly by man not since the beautiful light first shone on me and i am sad my zeal hath so offended let us call on him then the motion's good and of the spirit i will knock first knocks peace be within the door is opened and they enter scene two a room in love of wit's house enter subtle followed by tribulation and ananias oh you come twas time your threescore minutes were at last thread you see and down had gone furnus acedia taurus circulatorius lembic boltshead retort and pelican had all been cinders wicked ananius art thou returned nay then it goes down yet sir be appeased he is come to humble himself in spirit and to ask your patience if too much zeal hath carried him aside from the due path why this doth qualify the brethren had no purpose verily to give you the least grievance but are ready to lend their willing hands to any project the spirit and you direct this qualifies more and for the orphans goods let them be valued or what is needful else to the holy work it shall be numbered here by me the saints throw down their purse before you this qualifies most why thus it should be now you understand have i discoursed so unto you of our stone and of the good that it shall bring your cause showed you beside the main of hiring forces abroad drawing the hollanders your friends from the indies to serve you with all their fleet that even the medicinal use shall make you a faction and party in the realm as put the case that some great man in state he have the gout while you but send three drops of your elixir and you help him straight there you have made a friend another has the palsy or the dropsy he takes of your incombustible stuff he's young again there you have made a friend a lady that is past the feet of body though not of mind and hath her face decayed beyond all cure of paintings you restore with the oil of talc there you have made a friend and all her friends a lord that is a leper a knight that has the bone ache or a squire that hath both these you make them smooth and sound with a bare fricassee of your medicine still you increase your friends ay it is very pregnant and then the turning of this lawyer's pewter to plate at christmas <gasps> christ died i pray you yet ananius i have done or changing his parcel gilt to massy gold ye cannot but raise you friends withal to be of power to pay an army in the field to buy the king of france out of his realm or spain out of his indies what can you not do against lords spiritual or temporal that shall oppone you verily tis true we may be temporal lords ourselves i take it you may be anything and leave off to make long-winded exercises or suck up your ha huh and hum in a tune i not deny but such as are not graced in a state may for their ends be adverse in religion and get a tune to call the flock together for to say sooth a tune does much with women and other phlegmatic people it is your bell bells are profane a tune may be religious no warning with you then farewell my patience slight it shall down i will not be thus tortured i pray you sir all shall perish i have spoken it let me find grace sir in your eyes 
the man he stands corrected neither did his zeal but as yourself allow a tune somewhere which now being toward the stone we shall not need no nor your holy vizard to win widows to give you legacies or make zealous wives to rob their husbands for the common cause nor take the start of bonds broke but one day and say they were forfeited by providence nor shall you need or a night to eat huge meals to celebrate your next day's fast the better the whilst the brethren and the sisters humble debate the stiffness of the flesh nor cast before your hungry hearers scrupulous bones as whether a christian may hawk or hunt or where the matrons of the holy assembly may lay their hair out or wear doublets or have that idol starch about their linen it is indeed an idol mind him not sir i do command the spirit of zeal but trouble to peace within him pray you sir go on nor shall you need to go libel gainst the prelates and shorten so your ears against the hearing of the next wire-drawn grace nor of necessity rail against plays to please the alderman who daily custard you devour nor lie with zealous rage till you are hoarse not one of these so singular arts nor call yourselves by names of tribulation persecution restraint long patience and such like affected by the whole family or would of you only for glory and to catch the ear of the disciple truly sir they are ways that the godly brethren have invented for propagation of the glorious cause as very notable means and whereby also themselves grow soon and profitably famous oh but the stone all's idle to it nothing the art of angels nature's miracle the divine secret that doth fly in clouds from east to west and whose tradition is not from men but spirits i hate traditions i do not trust them peace they are popish all i will not peace i will not ananias please the profane to grieve the godly i may not well ananias thou shalt overcome it is ignorant zeal that haunts him sir but truly else a very faithful brother a botcher and a man by revelation that hath a competent knowledge of the truth has he a competent sum there in the bag to buy the goods within i am made guardian and must for charity and conscience sake now see the most be made for my poor orphan though i desire the brethren two good gainers there they are within when you have viewed and bought em and tain the inventory of what they are they are ready for projection there's no more to do cast on the medicine so much silver as there in tin there and so much gold as brass i'll give it to you by and wait but how long time sir must the saints expect yet let me see how's the moon now eight nine ten days since he'll be silver potate then three days before he citronize some fifteen days the magisterium will be perfected about the second day of the third week in the ninth month yes my good ananias what will the orphan's goods arise to think you some hundred marks as much as filled three cars unladed now you'll make six millions of them but i must have more coals laid in how another load and then we have finished we must now increase our fire to ignis ardens we are past femus equinus palni cisneris and all those lenter heats if the holy purse should with this draught fall low and that the saints do need a present sum i have a trick to melt the pewter you shall buy now instantly and with a tincture make you as good dutch dollars as any are in holland can you so ay and shall bide the third examination it will be joyful tidings to the brethren but you must carry it secret ay but stay this act of coining is it lawful oh, lawful we know no magistrate or if we did this is foreign coin 
"'It is no coining, sir. It is but casting.' "'Ha! You distinguish well. Casting of money may be lawful.' "'It is, sir.' "'Truly I take it so.' "'There is no scruple, sir, to be made of it. Believe, Ananias, this case of conscience he is studied in.' "'I'll make a question of it to the brethren.' the brethren shall approve it lawful doubt not where shall it be done knocking without for that will talk anon there's some to speak with me go in i pray you and view the parcels that's the inventory i'll come to you straight exant tribulation and ananias who is it face appear enter face in his uniform how now good prize good pox yon cost of cheater never came on how then i have walked around till now and no such thing and have you quit him quit him and hell would quit him too he were happy slight would you have me stalk like a mill jade all day for one that will not yield us grains i know him of old oh but to have gulled him would be a mastery let him go black boy and turn thee that some fresh news may possess thee a noble count a don of spain my dear delicious compere and my party bod who has come hither private for his conscience and brought munition with him six great slops bigger than three dutch boys besides round trunks furnished with pistolets and pieces of eight will straight be here my rogue to have thy bath that is the colour and to make his battery upon our dole our castle our sink port our dover pier our what thou wilt where is she she must prepare perfumes delicate linen the bath in chief a banquet and her wit for she must milk his epidus. Where is the doxy? I'll send her to thee, and but dispatch my brace of little John Laydens, and come again myself. Are they within, then? Numbering the sum. How much? A hundred marks, boy. Exit. Why, this is a lucky day. Ten pounds of mammon. Three of my clerk, a porterage of my grocer. This of the brethren, besides reversions, and states to come in the widow, and my account my share to-day will not be bought for forty enter doll what pounds dainty dorothy art thou so near yes say lord general how fares our camp as with the few that had entrenched themselves safe by their discipline against a world doll and laughed within these trenches and grew fat with thinking on the booties doll brought in daily by their small parties this dear hour a doughty dawn is taken with my doll and thou mayst make his ransom what thou wilt my Dusabel, he shall be brought here fettered with thy fair looks before he sees thee and thrown in a down bed as dark as any dungeon where thou shalt keep him waking with thy drum thy drum my doll thy drum till he be tame as the poor blackbirds were in the great frost or bees are with a basin and so hive him in the swan skin coverlid and cambric sheets till he work honey and wax my little god's gift what is he general an Atalanto, a grandy girl was not my dapper here yet no nor my drugger neither a pox on them they are so long a furnishing such stinkards would not be seen upon thy festival days how now have you done done they are gone the sum is here in bank my face i would we knew another chapman now would buy him outright slid nab shall do it against he have the widow to furnish household excellent well thought on pray god he come I pray ye keep away to our new business be o'er past. But, Face, how camest thou by this secret, Don? A spirit brought me the intelligence in a paper here, as I was conjuring yonder in my circle. For surely I have my flies abroad. Your bath is famous, subtle, by my means. Sweet Dole, you must go tune your virginal, no losing of the least time, and do you hear good action, burk like a flounder, kiss like a scallop, close, and tickle him with thy mother tongue. His great verdugership has not a jot of language so much the easier to be cousin to my dolly he will come here in a hired coach obscure and our own coachman whom i have sent as a guide no creature else knocking without who's that exit doll it is not he oh no not yet this hour re-enter doll who is't dapper your clerk god's will then queen of fairy on with your tire exit doll and doctor with your robes let's dispatch him for god's sake twill be long i warrant you take but the cues i give you it shall be brief enough goes to the window slight here are more abel 
and I think the angry boy, the heir that fain would quarrel. And the widow? No, not that I see. Away. Exit Saddle. Enter Dapper. Oh, sir, you are welcome. The doctor is within a moving for you. I have had the most to do to win him to it. He swears you'll be the darling of the dice. He never heard her highness dope till now. Your aunt has given you the most gracious words that can be thought on. Shall I see her grace? See her, and kiss her too. Enter Abel, followed by Castril. What, honest Nab, has brought the damask? Tis well done, Nab. Thou wilt bring the damask too? Yes, here's the gentleman, Captain, Master Castril. I have brought to see the doctor. Where's the widow? Sir, as he likes, his sister, he says, shall come. Oh, is it so? Good time. Is your name Castrol, sir? Aye, and the best of the Castrols. I'd be sorry else by fifteen hundred a year. Where's the doctor? My mad tobacco boy here tells me a one that can do things. Is he any skill? Wherein, sir? To carry a business, manage a quarrel fairly, upon fit terms. It seems, sir, you are but young about the town that can make that a question. Sir, not so young, but I've heard some speech of the angry boys, and seen em take tobacco, and in his shop, and I can take it too, and I would fain be one of em, and go down and practice in the country. Sir, for the duello, the doctor, I assure you, shall inform you to the least shadow of a hair, and show you an instrument he has of his own making, wherewith no sooner shall you make a report of any quarrel, but he will take the height on it most instantly, and tell in what degree of safety it lies in, O mortality and how it may be borne, where in a right line, or a half-circle, or may else be cast into an angle bluffed, if not acute, and this he will demonstrate, and then rules to give and take the lie by. How to take it? Yes, in oblique he'll show you, or in circle, but never in diameter. The whole town study his theorems, and dispute them ordinarily at the eating academies. But does he teach living by the wits, too? Anything whatever. You cannot think that subtlety but he reads it. He made me a captain. I was a stark pimp, just of your standing, before I met with him. It is not two months since. I'll tell you his method. First, he will enter you at some ordinary. No, I'll not come there. You shall pardon me. For why, sir? Well, there's gaming there, and tricks. Why, would you be a gallant, and not game? Aye, twill spend a man. Spend you? It will repair you when you are spent. How do they live by their wits there, that have vented six times your fortunes. What, three thousand a year? Aye, forty thousand. Are there such? Aye, sir, and gallants yet. Here's a young gentleman is born to nothing. Points to Dapper. Forty marks a year, which I count nothing. He is to be initiated, and to have a fly of a doctor. He will win you, by irresistible luck, within this fortnight, enough to buy a barony. They will set him upmost, at the groomed porter, all the Christmas and for the whole year through, at every place where there is play, present him with a chair, the best attendance, the best drink, sometimes two glasses of cannery, and say nothing, the purest linen and the sharpest knife, the partridge next his trencher, and somewhere the dainty bed in private with the dainty. You shall have your ordinaries bid for him, as playhouses for a poet, and the master pray him aloud to name what dish he affects, which must be buttered shrimp, and those that drink till no mouth else will drink to his, as being thy goodly president, mouth of all the board. Do you not gull one? Odds my life, do you think it? You shall have a cast commander. Can but get in credit with a glover or a spurrier, for some two pair of either's wear aforehand. Will, by most swift posts, dealing, but with him, arrive at competent means to keep himself his punk and naked boy, in excellent fashion, and be admired for it. Will the doctor teach this? He will do more, sir. When your land is gone, as men of spirit hate to keep earth long in a vacation, when small money is stirring and ordinary suspended till the term, he'll show a perspective, where on one side you shall behold the faces, and the persons of all sufficient young heirs in town, whose bonds are current for commodity. On the other side, the merchant's forms, and others that without help of any second broker, who would expect a share, will trust such parcels. In the third square, the very street and sign where the commodity dwells, and does but wait to be delivered, be it pepper, soap, hops, or tobacco, oatmeal, woad, or cheese, all which you may so handle, to enjoy to your own use, and never stand obliged. If faith, is he such a fellow? Why, Nab here knows him, and then for making matches for rich widows, young gentlemen, heirs, the fortunest man. He's sent to, 
far and near all over england to have his counsel and to know their fortunes god's will my sister shall see him i'll tell you sir what he did tell me of nab it's a strange thing by the way uh, you must eat no cheese nab it breeds melancholy and that same melancholy breeds worms but pass it uh, he told me honest nab here was ne'er at taverns but once it's his life truth and no more i was not and then he was so sick could he tell you that too and how should i know it in troth we had been a-shooting and had a piece of fat ram-mutton to supper that lay so heavy on my stomach and he has no head to bear any wine for what with the noise of the fiddlers and care of his shop for he dares keep no servants my head did so egg and he was fain to be brought home the doctor told me and then a good woman yes faith she dwells in sea coal lane did cure me with sodden ale and pellitory of the wall cost me but two pence i had another sickness was worse than that ay that was with the grief thou tookest for being ceased at eighteen pence for the water-work in truth and it was like to have cost me almost my life thy hair went off yes sir twas done for spite nay so says the doctor prithee tobacco boy go fetch my sister i'll see this learned boy before i go and so shall she sir he is busy now but if you have a sister to fetch hither perhaps your own pains may command her sooner and he by that time will be free i go exit drugger she's thine the damask exit abel subtle and i must rustle for her aside come on master dapper you see how i turn clients here away to give your cause dispatch have you performed the ceremonies were enjoined you yes of the vinegar and the clean shirt tis well that shirt may do you more worship than you think your aunt's a fire but that she will not show it to have a sight of you have you provided for her grace's servants yes here are six score edward shillings good and an old harry sovereign very good and three james shillings and an elizabeth groat just twenty nobles oh you are too just i would you had had the other noble in murray's i have some philip and mary's ay those same are best of all where are they hark the doctor enter subtle disguised like a priest of fairy with a stripe of cloth in a feigned voice is yet her grace's cousin come he is come and is he fasting yes and hath cried hum thrice you must answer thrice and as oft buzz if you have say i have then to her cuz hoping that he hath vinegared his senses as he was bid the fairy queen dispenses by me this robe the petticoat of fortune which that he straight put on she doth importune and though to fortune near be her petticoat yet nearer is his smock the queen doth note and therefore even of that a piece she hath sent which being a child to wrap him in was rent and praise him for a scarf he now will wear it with as much love as then her grace did tear it about his eyes they blind him with the rag to show he is fortunate and trusting unto her to make his state throw away all worldly pelf about him which that he will perform she doth not doubt him she need not doubt him sir alas he has nothing but what he will part with all as willingly upon her grace's word throw away your purse as she would ask it handkerchiefs and all he throws away as they bid him she cannot bid that thing but he'll obey if you have a ring about you cast it off or a silver seal at your wrist her grace will send her fairies here to search you and therefore deal directly with her highness if they find you conceal a mite you are undone truly there's all all what my money truly keep nothing that is transitory about you aside to saddle bid dole play some music dole place on the cittern within look the elves are come to pinch you if you tell not the truth advise you they pinch him oh i have a paper with the spur isle in it t t they knew it they say t t t t he has more yet t t t t aside to saddle in the other pocket t t t t t t t t t t they must pinch him or he will never confess they say they pinch him again oh oh nay pray you hold he is her grace's nephew t t t what care you good faith you shall care 
deal plainly sir and shame the fairies show you are innocent by this good light i have nothing tee 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 to ta he does equivocate she says tee tee do tee 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 do tee ta and swears by the light when he is blinded by this good dark i have nothing but a half crown of gold about my wrist that my love gave me and a leaden heart i wore since she forsook me i thought twas something and would you incur your aunt's displeasure for these trifles come i had rather you had thrown away twenty half-crowns takes it off you may wear your leaden heart still enter doll hastily how now what news doll yonder's your knight sir mammon odds lid we never thought of him till now where is he here hard by he is at the door and you are not ready now doll get his suit exit doll you must not be sent back oh by no means what shall we do with the same puffin here now he's on the spit why lay him back a while with some device re-enter doll with faces clothes titi 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 would her grace speak with me i come help doll knocking without speaks through the keyhole who's there sir epicure my nash is in the way please you to walk three or four turns but till his back be turned and i am for you quick doll her grace commends her kindly to you master dapper i long to see her grace she now is set at dinner in her bed and she has sent you from her own private trencher a dead mouse and a piece of gingerbread to be merry withal and stay your stomach lest you be faint with fasting yet if you could hold out till she saw you she says it would be better for you sir he shall hold out and twere this two hours for her highness i can assure you that we will not lose all we have done he must not see nor speak to anybody till then for that will put sir a stay in its mouth of what of gingerbread make you it fit he that hath pleased her grace thus far shall not now crinsel for a little gape sir and let him fit you they thrust a gag of gingerbread in his mouth where shall we now bestow him in the privy come along sir i now must show you fortune's privy lodgings are they perfumed and his bath ready all only the fumigation somewhat strong speaking through the keyhole sir epicure i am yours sir by and by exeunt with dapper end of act three Act four of The Alchemist by Ben Jonson. Act four, scene one. A room in Loverwit's house. Enter face and mammon. Oh, sir, you're come in the only finest time. Where's master? Now preparing for projection, sir. Your stuff will be all changed shortly. Into gold? To gold and silver, sir. Silver I care not for. Well, yes, sir, a little to give beggars. Where's the lady? At hand here. I have told her such brave things of you touching your bounty and your noble spirit. Hast thou? As she is almost in her fit to see you, but, good sir, no divinity in your conference for fear of putting her in rage. I warrant thee. Six men, sir, will not hold her down, and then, if the old man should hear or see you? Fear not. The very house, sir, would run mad you know it how scrupulous he is and violent against the least act of sin physic or mathematics poetry state or bawdry as i told you she will endure and never startle but no word of controversy i am schooled good ulen and you must praise her house remember that and her nobility let me alone no herald no nor antiquary lungs shall do it better go aside why this is yet a kind of modern happiness to have dole common for a great lady exit now epicure heighten thyself talk to her all in gold rain her as many showers as jove did drops unto his danae show the god a miser compared with mammon what the stone will do it 
she shall feel gold taste gold hear gold sleep gold nay we will conquer bear gold i will be puissant and mighty in my talk to her re-enter face with doll richly dressed here she comes to him doll suckle him this is the noble knight i told your ladyship madam with your pardon i kiss your vesture sir i were uncivil if i would suffer that my lip to you sir i hope my lord your brother be in health lady my lord my brother is though i no lady sir aside well said my guinea bird right noble madam aside oh we shall have most fierce idolatry tis your prerogative rather your courtesy were there not else to enlarge your virtues to me these answers speak your breeding and your blood blood we boast none sir a poor baron's daughter poor and get you profane not had your father slept all the happy remnant of his life after that act lion but there still and panted he had done enough to make himself his issue and his posterity noble sir although we may be said to want the gilt and trappings the dress of honour yet we strive to keep the seeds and the materials i do see the old ingredient of virtue was not lost nor the drug money used to make your compound there is a strange nobility in your eye this lip that chin methinks you do resemble one of the austriac princes very like beside her father was an irish costermonger the house of valois just had such a nose and such a forehead yet the medici of florence boast troth and i have been likened to all these princes beside i'll be sworn i heard it i know not how it is not any one but even the very choice of all their features aside i'll in and laugh exit a certain touch or air that sparkles a divinity beyond an earthly beauty oh you play the courtier good lady give me leave in faith i may not to mock me sir to burn in this sweet flame the phoenix never knew a nobler death nay now you court the courtier and destroy what you would build this art sir in your words calls your whole faith in question by my soul nay oaths are made of the same air sir nature never bestowed upon mortality a more unblamed a more harmonious feature she played the stepdame in all faces else sweet madam let me be particular particular sir i pray you know your distance in no ill sense sweet lady but to ask how your fair graces pass the hours i see you are lodged here in the house of a rare man an excellent artist but what's that to you yes sir i study here the mathematics and distillation oh i cry your pardon he's a divine instructor can extract the souls of all things by his art call all the virtues and the miracles of the sun into a temperate furnace teach dull nature what her own forces are a man the emperor has courted above kelly sent his medals and chains to invite him ay and for his physic sir above the art of esculapius that drew the envy of the thunderer i know all this and more troth i am taken sir whole with these studies that contemplate nature it is a noble humour but this form was not intended to so dark a use had you been crooked foul of some coarse mould a cloister had done well but such a feature that might stand up the glory of a kingdom to live recluse is a mere solecism 
though in a nunnery it must not be i muse my lord your brother will permit it you should spend half my land first were i he does not this diamond better on my finger than in the quarry yes why you are like it you are created lady for the light here you shall wear it take it the first pledge of what i speak to bind you to believe me in chains of adamant yes the strongest bands and take a secret too here by your side doth stand this hour the happiest man in europe you are contended sir nay in true being the envy of princes and the fear of states say you so sir epicure yes and thou shalt prove it daughter of honour i have cast my eye upon thy form and i will rear this beauty above all styles you mean no treason sir no i will take away that jealousy i am the lord of the philosopher's stone and thou the lady how sir have you that i am the master of the mystery this day the good old wretch here at the house has made it for us now he's at projection think therefore thy first wish now let me hear it and it shall raid into thy lap no shower but floods of gold whole cataracts a deluge to get a nation on thee you are pleased sir to work on the ambition of our sex i am pleased the glory of her sex should know this nook here of the friars is no climate for her to live obscurely in to learn physic and surgery for the constable's wife of some odd hundred in essex but come forth and taste the air of palaces eat drink the toils of empirics and their boasted practice tincture of pearl and coral gold and amber be seen at feasts and triumphs have it asked what miracle she is set all the eyes of court afire like a burning glass and work them into cinders where the jewels of twenty states adorn thee and the light strikes out the stars that when thy name is mentioned queens may look pale and we but showing our love nero's papier may be lost in story thus will we have it i could well consent sir but in a monarchy how will this be the prince will soon take notice and both sees you and your stone it being a wealth unfit for any private subject if he knew it yourself do boast it sir to thee my life oh but beware sir you may come to end the remnants of your days in a loathed prison by speaking of it tis no idle fear we'll therefore go with all my girl and live in a free state where we will eat our mullets soused in high country wines sup pheasants eggs and have our cockles boiled in silver shells our shrimps to swim again as when they lived in a rare butter made of dolphin's milk whose cream does look like opals and with these delicate meats set ourselves high for pleasure and take us down again and then renew our youth and strength with drinking the elixir and so enjoy a perpetuity of life and lust and thou shalt have thy wardrobe richer than nature's still to change thyself and very oftener for thy pride than she or art her wise and almost equal servant re-enter face sir you are too loud i hear your every word in the laboratory some fitter place the garden or great chamber above how like you her excellent lungs there's for thee gives him money but do you hear good sir beware no mention of the rabbins we think not on em exaunt mammon and doll oh it is well sir subtle enter subtle dost thou not laugh <laughs> yes are they gone all's clear the widow is come and your quarrelling disciple i i must to my captainship again then stay bring them in first so i meant what is she 
A Bonnebel? I know not. We'll draw a lot. You'll stand to that? What else? Oh, for a suit. To fall now like a curtain, flap. To the door, man. You'll have the first kiss, cause I am not ready. Exit. Yes, and perhaps hit you through both the nostrils. Within. Who would you speak with? Within. Where is the captain? Within. Gone, sir, about some business. Within. Gone? Within. He'll return straight. But Master Doctor, his lieutenant, is here. Enter Castrel, followed by Dame Pliant. Come near, my worshipful boy, my terai filly, that is my boy of land. Make thy approaches. Welcome. I know thy lusts and thy desires, and I will serve and satisfy them. Begin, charge me from thence, or thence, or in this line, here is my centre, ground thy quarrel. You lie. How, child of wrath and anger, the loud lie? For what, my sudden boy? Nay, that look you too, I am aforehand. Oh, this is no true grammar, and as ill logic. You must render causes, child, your first and second intentions, know your canons and your divisions, moods, degrees, and differences, your predicaments, substance, and accident, series, extern, and intern with their causes, efficient, material, formal, final, and have your elements perfect. Aside. What is this? The angry tongue he talks in? That false precept of being a forehand has deceived a number, and made them enter quarrels oftentimes before they were aware, and afterward against their wills. How must I do then, sir? I cry this lady mercy, she should first have been saluted. Kisses her. I do call you lady, because you are to be one ere it be long, my soft and buxom widow. Is she a faith? Yes, or my art is an egregious liar. How know you? By inspection on her forehead, and subtlety of her lip, which must be tasted often to make a judgment. Kisses her again. Slight, she melts like a Myro Boleyne. Here is yet a line in Rivo Frontis, tells me he is no knight. What is he then, sir? Let me see your hand. Oh, your linear fortune makes it plain. And Stella here in Monte Veneris. But most of all, Junctura Annularis, he is a soldier, or a man of art, lady, but shall have some great honour shortly. Brother, he's a rare man, believe me. Re enter face in his uniform. Hold your peace. Here comes to the rare man. Save your captain. Good Master Castrol. Is this your sister? Oi, sir, please you to kiss her, and be proud to know her. I shall be proud to know you, lady. Kisses her. Brother, he calls me lady, too. Ay, peace, I heard it. Takes her aside. The Count is come. Where is he? At the door. Why, you must entertain him. What will you do with these the while? Why, have them up and show them some fustian book or the dark glass. For God, she is a delicate dab chick. I must have her. Exit. Must you? I, of your fortune, will you must. Come, sir, the captain will come to us presently. I'll have you to my chamber of demonstrations, where I will show you both the grammar and logic and rhetoric of my quarrelling, the whole method drawn out in tables, and my instrument that hath the several scales upon it shall make you able to quarrel at a straw's breadth by moonlight. And, lady, I'll have you look in a glass some half an hour, but to clear your eyesight, against you see your fortune, which is greater than I may judge upon the sudden, trust me. Exit, followed by Castrol and Dame Pliant. Re-enter face. Where are you, doctor? Within. I'll come to you presently. I will have the same widow, now I have seen her, on any composition. Re-enter subtle. What do you say? Have you disposed of them? I have sent them up. Subtle, in troth, I needs must have this widow. Is that the matter? Nay, but hear me. Go to. If you rebel once, Doll shall know it all. Therefore be quiet and obey your chance. Nay, thou art so violent now. Do but conceive, thou art old, and canst not serve. Who cannot? 
I? Slight, I will serve her with thee for a— Nay, but understand, I'll give you composition. I will not treat with thee. What, sell my fortune? Tis better than my birthright. Do not murmur. Winner and carrier. If you grumble, Doll knows it directly. Well, sir, I am silent. Will you go help to fetch in Don in state? Exit. I follow you, sir. We must keep face in all, or he will overlook us like a tyrant. Re-enter face, introducing Surly, disguised as a Spaniard. Brain of a tailor, who comes here? Don John? Senores, besto las manos a vuestra Mercedes. Would you had stooped a little and kissed our Arnos? Peace, Saro. Stab me, I shall never hold, man. He looks in that deep ruff like a head in a platter, served in by a short cloak upon two trestles. Or what would you say to a collar of brawn, cut down beneath the souse, and wriggled with a knife? Sluddy does look too fat to be a Spaniard. Perhaps some Fleming or some Hollander got him. Tis Valvin's time. Count Egmont's bastard. Don, your scurvy yellow Madrid face is welcome. Grazia. He speaks out of a fortification. Pray God he have no squibs in those deep sets. Por Dios, senores, muy linda casa. What says he? Praises the house, I think. I know no more of its action. Yes, the casa, my precious Diego, will prove fair enough to cousin you in. <laughs> do you mark? You shall be cousined, Diego. Cousined, do you see? My worthy donzel, cousined. Entiendo. Do you intend it? So do we, dear Don. Have you brought pistolets or Portuguese, my solemn Don? Dost thou feel any? Feels his pockets. Four. You shall be emptied, Don, pumped and drawn dry, as they say. Milked in troth, sweet Don. See all the monsters, the great line of all, Don. Condescencia. Si puede ver a esta señora. What talks he now? Of the sonora. Oh, Don, this is the lioness, which you shall see also, my Don. Slid, subtle. How shall we do? For what? Why, Dole's employed, you know. That's true, for heaven. I know not. He must stay, that's all. Stay? That he must not, by no means. No? Why? Unless you'll mar all. Slight, he will suspect it, and then he will not pay, not half so well. This is a travelled punk master, and does know all the delays, a notable hot rascal, and looks already rampant. Steph and Mammon must not be troubled. Mammon? In no case. What shall we do, then? Think. You must be sudden. Entiendo que la señora es tan hermosa, que codicio tan a verla como la bien aventaranca de mi vida. Mi vida! Sly, subtle, he puts me in mind of the widow. What dost thou say to draw her to it, la? And tell her tis her fortune. All our venture now lies upon it. It is but one man more, which of us chance to have her. And beside, there is no maidenhead to be feared or last. What dost thou think on it, Subtle? Who? I? Why— The credit of our house, too, was engaged. You made me an offer for my share ere while. What wilt thou give me, a faith? Oh, by that light I'll not buy now. You know your doom to me. E'en take your lot, obey your chance, sir. Win her, and wear her out for me. Oh, Sly, I'll not work her then. It is the common cause. Therefore bethink you. Dole else must know it, as you said. I care not. Senores, porque se tarda tanto? Faith, I am not fit. I am old. That's now no reason, sir. Puede se te aza burla de mi amor. You fear the dawn, too? By this air I call and loose the hinges. Dole! A plague of hell. Will you then do? You are a terrible rogue. I'll think of this. Will you, sir, call the widow? Yes, and I'll take her too with all her faults, now I think upon it better. With all my heart, sir. Am I discharged of the lot? As you please. Hands. They take hands. Remember now that upon any change you never claim her. Much good joy and health to you, sir. Marry a whore. Faith, let me wed a witch first. 
poestas honoratas barbas he swears by his beard dispatch and call the brother to exit face tengo duda senores que no me hagan alguna traición how is he one yes uh, presto senor please you enthrafa the chambrata worthy don where if you please the fates in your bath ardour you shall be soaked and stroked and tubbed and rubbed and scrubbed and fubbed dear don before you go you shall in faith my scurvy baboon don be curred and clawed and floored and tored indeed i will the heartlier go about it now and make the widow a punk so much the sooner to be revenged on this impetuous face the doing quickly of it is the grace exhort subtle and surly scene two another room in the same enter face castrol and dame pliant come lady i knew the doctor would not leave till he found the very nick of her fortune to be a countess say you a spanish countess sir why is that better than an english countess better slight make you that a question lady nay she is a fool captain you must pardon her as from your courtier to your inns of court man to your mere milliner they will tell you all your spanish genet is the best horse your spanish troop is the best garb your spanish beard is the best cut your spanish ruffs are the best wear your spanish pavilion the best dance your spanish translation in a glove the best perfume and for your spanish pike and spanish blade let your poor captain speak here comes the doctor enter subtle with a paper my most honoured lady for so i am now to style you having found by this my scheme you are to undergo an honourable fortune very shortly what will you say now if some i have told her all sir and her right worshipful brother here that she shall be a countess do not delay them sir a spanish countess still my scarce worshipful captain you can keep no secret well since he has told you madam do you forgive him and i do she shall do that sir i'll look to it tis my charge well then naught rests but that she fit her love now to her fortune truly i shall never brook a spaniard no never since eighty eight could i abide them and that was some three year before i was born in truth come you must love him or be miserable choose which you will by this good rush persuade her she will cry strawberries else within this twelvemonth nay shads and mackerel which is worse indeed sir odds late you shall love him or i'll kick you why i'll do as you will have me brother do or by this hand i'll maul you nay good sir be not so fierce no my enraged child she will be ruled what when she comes to taste the pleasures of a countess to be courted and kissed and ruffled ay behind the hangings and then come forth in pomp and know her state of keeping all the idolaters of the chamber bearer to her than at her prayers is served upon the knee and has her pages ushers footmen and coaches her six mares nay eight to hurry her through london to the exchange bethlehem the china houses yes and have the citizens gape at her and praise her tires and my lord's goose-turd bands that ride with her most brave by this hand you are not my sister if you refuse i will not refuse brother and to sorely que es esto senores que non se venga esta tandaza mi mata it is the count come the doctor knew he would be here by his art en galenta madama don galantissima por todos los dios la mas acabada hermosura que he visto en mi vida is it not a gallant language that they speak an admirable language it's not french no spanish sir it goes like law french and that they say is the courtliest language a list sir el sol al perdido se lumbre con el resplandor que tra esta dama valga mi dios he admires your sister must she not make curtsy odds will she must go to a man and kiss him it is the spanish fashion for the women to make first court tis true he tells you sir his art knows all porque no se acude he speaks to her i think that he does sir por el amor de dios que es esto que se tarda 
I may see she will not understand him. Gull noddy. What say you, brother? Ask my sister. Go kiss him as the cunning man would have you. Or he'll thrust a pin in your buttocks else. Oh, no, sir. Signora mia, mi persona mi indigna esta alegan a tanta emissora. Does he not use her bravely? Bravely, of faith. Nay, he will use her better. Do you think so? Signora, si seda se vida entre mos. Exit with the implant. Where does he carry her? Into the garden, sir. Take you no thought. I must interpret for her. Give Dole the word. Aside to face, who goes out. Come, my fierce child, advance. We'll to our quarrelling lesson again. Agreed. I love a Spanish boy with all my heart. Nay, and by this means, sir, you shall be brother to a great count. Ay, I knew that at first. This match will advance the house of the Castrels. God pray your sister prove but pliant. Why, her name is so by her other husband. How? The widow pliant. Knew you not that? No, faith, sir. Yet by erection of her figure I guessed it. Come, let's go to practice. Yes, but do you think, doctor, I e'er shall quarrel well? I warrant you. Exeunt. Scene three. Another room in the same. Enter Dole in her fit of raving, followed by Mammon. For after Alexander's death, Good lady, That Perdiccas and Antigonus were slain, The two that stood, Sir Luke and Ptolemy, Madam, Made up the two legs and the fourth beast, That was Gog North and Egypt South, Which after was called Gog Iron Leg and South Iron Leg. Lady, and then gog horned so was egypt too then egypt clay leg and gog clay leg sweet madam and last gog dust and egypt dust which fall in the last link of the fourth chain and these be stars in story which none see or look at what shall i do for as he says except we call the rabbins and the heathen greeks dear lady to come from Salem and from Athens and teach the people of Great Britain. And to face hastily in his servant's dress. What's the matter, sir? To speak the tongue of Eber and Javan. Oh, she's all in her fit. We shall know nothing. Death, sir, we are undone. Where then a learned linguist shall see the ancient used communion of vowels and consonants? My master will hear. A wisdom which Pythagoras held most high. Sweet honourable lady. To comprise all sounds of voices in few marks of letters. Nay, you must never hope to lay her now. They all speak together. And so we may arrive by Talmud's skill, and profane Greek to raise the building up, of Helen's house against the Ismailite, king of Thagama and his Herbergians, brimstony blue and fiery and the force of king abaddon and the beast of sittim which rabbi david kimchi onkelos and aben ezra do interpret rome how did you put her into it alas i talked of a fifth monarchy i would erect with a philosopher's stone by chance and she falls on the other four straight out of Bronton, i told you so slid stop her mouth is best She'll never leave else. If the old man hear her, we are but Fizi's ashes. Enter subtle. They run different ways. Oh, we are lost. Now she hears him. She is quiet. Where shall I hide me? How? What sight is here? Close deeds of darkness and that shun the light. Bring him again. Who is he? What? My son? Oh, I have lived too long. Nay, good dear father, there was no unchaste purpose not and flee me when i come in that was my error error guilt guilt my son give it the right name no marvel if i found check in our great work within when such affairs as these were managing why have you so it has stood still this half hour and all the rest of our less works gone back where is the instrument of wickedness my lewd false drudge nay good sir blame not him believe me twas against his will or knowledge 
I saw her by chance. Will you commit more sin to excuse a varlet? By my hope, tis true, sir. Nay, then, I wonder less if you for whom the blessing was prepared would so tempt heaven and lose your fortunes. Why, sir? This will retard the work a month at least. Why, if it do, what remedy? But think it not, good father, our purposes were honest. As they were, so the reward will prove. A loud explosion within. How now? Ah, me! God and all saints be good to us. Re enter face. What's that? Oh, sir, we are defeated. All the works are flown in fumo, every glass is burst, furnace, and all rent down, as if a bolt of thunder had been driven through the house. Retorts, receivers, pelicans, bolt heads, all struck in shivers. Subtle falls down as in a swoon. Help, good sir. Alas, cold and death invades him. Nay, Sir Mammon, do the fair offices of a man. You stand as you were readier to depart than he. Knocking within. Who's there? My lord, her brother, is come. Oh, lungs. His coach is at the door. Avoid his sight, for he's as furious as his sister's mad. Alas. My brain is quite undone with the fumes, sir. I ne'er must hope to be mine own man again. His old lost lungs? Will nothing be preserved of all our cost? Faith, very little, sir. A pack of coals or so, which is cold comfort, sir. Oh, my voluptuous mind, I am justly punished. And so am I, sir. Cast from all my hopes. Nay, certainty, sir. By mine own base affections. Seeming to come to himself. Oh, oh, the f cursed fruits of vice and lust. Good father, it was my sin. Forgive it hangs my roof over us still and will not fall o oh, justice upon us for this wicked man nay look sir you grieve him now with staying in his sight good sir the nobleman will come too and take you and that may breed a tragedy i'll go ay and repent at home sir it may be for some good penance you may have it yet a hundred pounds to the box at bethlehem yes for the restoring such as have their wits i'll do it i'll send one to you to receive it do. Is no projection left? All flow, or stinks, sir. Will naught be saved that's good for medicine, thinkst thou? I cannot tell, sir. There will be, perhaps, something about the scraping of the shards will cure the itch, though not your itch of mine, sir. Aside. It shall be saved for you and sent home. Good, sir, this way, for fear the Lord should meet you. Exit Mammon, raising his head. Face. Aye. Is he gone? Yes and as heavily as all the gold he hoped for were in his blood. Let us be light, though. Leaping up. I, as balls and bound and hit our heads against the roof for joy, is so much of our care now cast away. Now, to our dawn. Yes, your young widow by this time has made a countess face. She has been in travail of a young heir for you. Good, sir. Off with your case, and greet her kindly as a bridegroom should after these common hazards. Very well, sir. Will you go fetch Don Diego off the while? And fetch him over, too, if you'll be pleased, sir. Would Doll were in her place to pick his pockets now? Why, you can't do as well. If you would set to it, I pray you prove your virtue. For your sake, sir. Exeunt. Scene four. Another room in the same. Enter Surly and Dame Pliant. Lady, you see into what hands you are fallen, monks what a nest of villains and how near your honour was to have catched a certain clap through your credulity had i but been so punctually forward as place time and other circumstances would have made a man for you are a handsome woman would that you were wise too i am a gentleman come here disguised only to find the knaveries of this citadel and where i might have wronged your honour i have not i claim some interest in your love you are they say a widow rich and i'm a bachelor worth naught your fortunes may make me a man as mine have preserved you a woman think upon it and whether i have deserved you or no i will sir and for these household rogues let me alone to treat with them and to subtle how doth my noble diego and my dear madam countess hath the count been courteous lady liberal and open 
Donzel, methinks you look melancholic, after your coitum and scurvy. Truly I do not like the dullness of your eye. It hath a heavy cast, tis upsy Dutch, and says you are a lumpish whore-master. Be lighter, and I will make your pockets so. Attempt to pick them. Throws open his cloak. Will you, Don Borden Pickpurse? Strikes him down. How now, reel you? Stand up, sir, and you shall find, since I am so heavy, I'll give you equal weight. Help! Murder! No, sir, there's no such thing intended. A good cart and a clean whip shall ease you of that fear. I am the Spanish Don that should be cousined. Do you see, cousined? Where's your captain face, that parcel broker, and the whole board, all rascal? Enter face in his uniform. How, surly? Oh, make your approach, good captain. I have found from whence your copper rings and spoons come now, wherewith you cheated broad in taverns, twas here you learned to anoint your boot with brimstone, then rub men's gold on it for a kind of touch, and say twas naught, when you had changed the colour that you might have for nothing. And this doctor, your sooty smoke-beard compere, he will close you so much gold in a bolt's head, and on a turn convey instead another, with sublimed mercury that shall burst in the heat and fly out in fumo then weeps mammon then swoons his worship face slips out or is he the faustus that casteth figures and can conjure cures plagues piles and pox by the ephemerides and hold the intelligence of all the boards and midwives of three shires while you send in captain what is he gone damsels with child wives that are barren or waiting maids with a green sickness ceases subtle as he is retiring nay sir you must tarry though he be scaped and answer by the ears sir re-enter face with castriel why now is the time if ever you will quarrel well as they say and be a true-born child the doctor and your sister both are abused where is he which is he he is a slave where'er he is and the son of a whore are you the man sir i would know I should be loath, sir, to confess so much. Then you lie in your throat. How? To Castril. A very errant rogue, sir, and a cheater employed here by another conjurer that does not love the doctor, and would cross him if he knew how. Sir, you are abused. You lie, and tis no matter. Well said, sir. He is the impudest rascal. You are indeed. Will you hear me, sir? By no means. Bid him be gone. Be gone, sir, quickly. This is strange lady do you inform your brother there is not such a foist in all the town the doctor had him presently and finds yet the spanish count will come here aside bear up subtle yes sir he must appear within this hour and yet this rogue would come in a disguise by the temptation of another spirit to trouble our art though he could not hurt it ay i know away to his sister you talk like a foolish mother sir all is truth she says do not believe him sir he is a lying to swabber. Come your way, sir. You are a valiant out of company. Yes. How then, sir? Enter Drugger with a piece of damask. Nay, here's an honest fellow, too, that knows him and all his tricks. Make good what I say, Abel. This cheater would have cousined thee or the widow. Aside to Drugger. He owes this honest Drugger here seven pound. He has had on him in two pennyworths of tobacco. Yes, sir, and he has damned himself three terms to pay me. And what does he owe for the Lotsium? Thirty shillings, sir, and for six syringes. Hydra villainy. Nay, sir, you must quarrel him out of the house. Oh, you will, sir, if you get not out of doors, you lie, and you are a pimp. Why, this is madness, sir, not valour in you. I must laugh at this. It is my humour. You are a pimp and a trig and an Amadis de Gaulle or a Don Quixote. Or a knight of the curious coxcomb, do you see? Enter Ananias. Peace to the household. I'll keep peace for no man. Casting of dollars is concluded lawful. Is he the constable? Peace, Ananias. No, sir. Then you are an otter and a shad, a wit, a very tim. You'll hear me, sir. I will not. What is the motive? zeal in the young gentleman against his spanish slops oh they are profane lewd superstitious and idolatrous breeches 
new rascals. Will you be gone, sir? Avoid, Satan. Thou art not of the light. That ruff of pride about thy neck betrays thee, and is the same with that which the unclean birds in seventy seven were seen to prank it with on divers coasts. Oh, thou lookst like Antichrist in that lewd hat. I must give way. Be gone, sir. But I'll take a course with you. Depart, proud Spanish fiend. Captain and doctor. Child of perdition. Hence, sir. Exit Surly. Did I not quarrel bravely? Yes, indeed, sir. Nay, and I give my mind to it, I shall do it. Oh, you must follow, sir, and threaten him tame. He'll turn again, else. I'll return him, then. Exit. Subtle takes Ananias aside. Drugger, this rogue prevented us for thee. We had determined that thou shouldst have come in a Spanish suit, and have carried her so, and he, a brokerly slave, goes, puts it on himself. Hast brought the damask? Yes, sir. Thou must borrow a Spanish suit. Hast thou no credit with the players? Yes, sir. Did you never see me play the fool? I know not, Nab. Thou shalt, if I can help it. Aside. Hieronimo's old cloak, ruff, and hat will serve. I'll tell thee more when thou bringest them. Exit Drugger. Sir, I know the Spaniard hates the brethren, and hath spies upon their axioms, and that this was one I make no scruple, but the holy synod have been in prayer and meditation for it, and tis revealed no less to them than me that casting of money is most lawful true but here i cannot do it if the house should chance to be suspected all would out and we be locked up in the tower for ever to make gold there for the state never come out and then you are defeated i will tell this to the elders and the weaker brethren that the whole company of the separation may join in humble prayer again and fasting yea for some fitter place the peace of mind rest with these walls exit thanks courteous Ananius. what did he come for about casting dollars presently out of hand and so i told him a spanish minister came here to spy against the faithful i conceive come subtle thou art so down upon the least disaster how wouldst thou have done if i had not helped thee out i thank thee face for the angry boy of faith who would have looked it should have been that rascal surly he had dyed his beard and all well sir here's dan must come to make you a suit where's drugger he has gone to borrow me a spanish habit i'll be the count now but where's the widow within with my lord's sister madame dole is entertaining her by your favour face now she is honest i will stand again you will not offer it why stand to your word or here comes dole she knows you are tyrannous still enter dole hastily strict for my right how now dole hast thou told her the spanish count will come yes but another is come you little looked for who is that your master the master of the house how dull she lies this is some trick come leave your quibblings dorothy look out and see face goes to the window art thou in earnest slight forty of the neighbours are about him talking tis he by this good day twill prove ill day for some on us we are undone and taken lost i'm afraid you said he would not come while well, there died one a week within the liberties no twas within the walls Wast so? Cry you mercy, I thought the liberties. What shall we do now, face? Be silent, not a word, if he should call or knock. I'll slip into mine own shape again and meet him of Jeremy the butler. In the meantime, do you two pack up all the goods and purchase that we can carry in the two trunks. I'll keep him off for to-day, if I cannot longer, and then at night I'll ship you both away to Ratcliffe, where we shall meet to-morrow, and there we'll share. Let Mammon's brass and pewter keep the cellar. We'll have another time for that. But, Dole, prithee go heat a little water quickly. Subtle must shave. All my captain's beard must go, to make me appear smooth Jeremy. You'll do it? 
Yes, I'll shave you as well as I can. And not cut my throat, but trim me? You shall see, sir. End of Act Four Act Five of The Alchemist by Ben Jonson Scene One Before Lovewit's Door Enter Lovewit with several of the neighbours. Has there been such resort, say you? Daily, sir. And nightly, too. Ay, some as brave as lords. Ladies and gentlewomen. Citizens' wives. And knights. In coaches. Yes, and oyster women. Beside other gallants. Sailors' wives. Tobacco men. Another Pimlico. What should my knave advance to draw this company? He hung out no banners of a strange calf with five legs to be seen, or a huge lobster with six claws. No, sir. We had gone in then, sir. He has no gift of teaching in the nose that e'er I knew of. You saw no bill set up that promised cure of agues or the toothache. No such thing, sir. Nor heard a drum struck for baboons or puppets. Neither, sir. What device should he bring forth now? I love a teeming wit as I love my nourishment. Pray God he have not kept such open house, that he hath sold my hangings and my bedding. I left him nothing else. If he have et them, a plague of the moth, say I. Sure he has got some body pictures to call all this ging, the friar and the nun, or the new motion of the knight's courser covering the parson's mare. Or it may be he has the fleas that run at tilt upon a table, or some dog to dance. When saw you him? Who, sir? Jeremy? Jeremy Butler? We saw him not this month. How? Not these five weeks, sir. These six weeks, at the least. You amaze me, neighbours. Sure, if your worship knows not where he is, he slipped away. Pray God he be not made away. Ha! It's no time to question, then. Knocks at the door. About some three weeks since I heard a doleful cry, as I sat up amending my wife's stockings. Tis strange that none will answer. Didst thou hear a cry, sayest thou? Yes, sir, like unto a man that had been strangled an hour and could not speak. I heard it, too, just this day three weeks at two o'clock next morning. These be miracles, or you make them so. A man an hour strangled and could not speak, and both you heard him cry? Yes, downward, sir. Thou art a wise fellow. Give me thy hand, I pray thee. What trade art thou on? A smith, and please your worship. A smith? Then lend me thy help to get this door open. That I will presently, sir, but uh, fetch my tools. Exit. Sir, best to knock again before you break it. Knocks again. I will. Enter face in his butler's library. What do you mean, sir? Oh, oh here's, here's Jeremy. 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 Good sir, come from the door. Why, what's the matter? Get farther. You are too near yet. In the name of wonder, what means the fellow? The house, sir, has been visited. What? With the plague? Stand thou then farther. No, sir, I had it not. Who had it then? I left none else but thee in the house. Yes, sir, my fellow, the cat that kept the buttery, had it on her a week before I spied it. But I got her covered away in the night, and so I shut the house up for a month. How? Purposing then, sir, to have burnt rose vinegar, treacle, and tar, and had it made sweet, that you should never have known it, because I knew the news would but afflict you, sir. Breathe less, and farther off. Why, this is stranger. The neighbors tell me all here that the doors have still been open. How, sir? Gallants, men and women, and of all sorts, tag-rag, been seen to flock here in threaves. These ten weeks, as to a second hog's den, in days of Pimlico and Eyebright. Sir, their wizens will not say so. Today they speak of coaches and gallants. One in a French hood went in, they tell me, and another was seen in a velvet gown at the window. Divers more pass in and out. They did pass through the doors, then, or walls. I assure their eyesights and their spectacles. For here, sir, are the keys. And here have been, in this my pocket, now above twenty days. And for before, I kept the fort alone there. 
but that tis yet not deep in the afternoon i should believe my neighbors have seen double through the black pot and made these apparitions for on my faith to your worship for these three weeks and upwards the door has not been opened strange good faith i think i saw a coach and i too i'd have been sworn do you but think it now and but one coach we cannot tell sir jeremy is an honest fellow did you see me at all no that we are sure on i'll be sworn to that fine rogues to have your testimonies built on re-enter third neighbour with his tools is jeremy come oh yes you may leave your tools we were deceived he says like enough peace and get hence you changelings enter surly and mammon aside surely come and mammon made acquainted they'll tell all how shall i beat them off what shall i do nothing's more wretched than a guilty conscience no sir he was a great physician this it was no bawdy house but a mere chancel you knew the lord and his sister nay good surly the happy word be rich play not the tyrant should be to-day pronounced to all your friends and where be your andirons now and your brass pots that should have been gold flagons and great wedges let me but breathe what they have shut their doors methinks ay now tis holiday with them rogues he and surly knock cozeners impostors boards what mean you sir to enter if we can another man's house here is the owner sir turn you to him and speak your business are you sir the owner yes sir and are those knaves within your cheaters what knaves what cheaters subtle and his lungs the gentleman is distracted sir no lungs nor lights have been seen here these three weeks sir within these doors upon my word your word groom arrogant yes sir i am the housekeeper and know the keys have not been out of my hands this is a new face you do mistake the house sir what sight was it at you rascal this is one of the confederacy come let's get officers and force the door pray you stay gentlemen no sir we'll come with warrant ay and then we'll have your doors open exaunt mammon and surly what means this i cannot tell sir these are two of the gallants that we do think we saw two of the fools your talk as idly as they good faith sir i think the moon has crazed them all aside oh me enter castril the angry boy come too he'll make a noise and ne'er away till he shall have betrayed us all knocking what rogues bards slaves you'll open the door and on punk cockatrice boy sister by this light i'll fetch the marshal to you you are a whore to keep your castle who would you speak with sir the boardy doctor and the cousining captain and puss my sister this is something sure upon my trust the doors were never opened sir i have heard all their tricks told me twice over by the fat knight and the lean gentleman here comes another enter ananias and tribulation ananias too and his pastor beating at the door the doors are shut against us oh, come forth you seed of sulphur sons of fire your stench it is broke forth abomination is in the house why my sister's there the place it is become a cage of unclean birds yes i will fetch the scavenger and the constable you shall do well we'll join to weed them out you will not come then punk devise my sister call her not sister she's a harlot verily i'll raise the street good gentlemen a word satan avoid and hinder not our zeal exant ananias tribulation and castril the world's turned bethlehem these are all broke loose out of st catherine's where they used to keep the better sort of mad folks all these persons we saw go in and out here yes indeed sir these were the parties peace you drunkards sir i wonder at it please you to give me leave to touch the door i'll try and the lock be changed it mazes me goes to the door good faith sir i believe there's no such thing 
"'Tis all deceptio visus. Aside. Would I could get him away. Within. Master Captain, Master Doctor. Who's that? Our clerk within, that I forgot. I know not, sir. Within. For God's sake, when will her grace be at leisure? Ha! Illusions! Some spirit of the air! Aside. His gag is melted, and now he sets out the throat. Within. I am almost stifled. Aside. Would you were altogether. Tis in the house. Ha! List. Believe it, sir, in the air. Peace you. Mine aunt's grace does not use me well. You fool, peace! You'll mar all. Speaks through the keyhole, while Lovett advances to the door, unobserved. Or you will else, you rogue. Oh, is it so? Then you converse with spirits. Come, sir, no more of your tricks, good Jeremy. The truth, the shortest way. Dismiss this rabble, sir. Aside. What shall I do? I am catched. Good neighbours, I thank you all. You may depart. Exeunt neighbours. Come, sir, you know that I am an indulgent master, and therefore conceal nothing. What's your medicine to draw so many several sorts of wild fowl? Sir, you were wont to affect mirth and wit, but there's no place to talk out in the street. Give me but leave to make the best of my fortune, and only pardon me the abuse of your house. It's all I beg. I hope you to a widow in recompense that you shall give me thanks for. It will make you seven years younger, and a rich one. Tis but your putting on a Spanish cloak. I have her within. You need not fear the house. It was not visited. But by me, who came sooner than you expected. It is true, sir. Pray you forgive me. Well, let's see your widow. Exalt. Scene two. A room in the same. Enter subtle, leading in dapper, with his eyes bound as before. How? You've eaten your gag? Yes, Faith, it crumbled away in my mouth. You've spoiled all, then. No, I hope my aunt, a fairy, will forgive me. Your aunt's a gracious lady, but in truth you were to blame. The fume did overcome me, and I did do to stay my stomach. Pray you, so satisfy her grace. Enter face in his uniform. Here comes the captain. How now? Is his mouth down? Aye, he has spoken. A pox. I heard him, and you too. He's undone, then. I have been fain to say the house is haunted with spirits to keep the churl back. And hast thou done it? Sure, for this night. Why, then, triumph and sing of face so famous, the precious king of present wits. Did you not hear the coil about the door? Yes, and I dwindled with it. Show him his aunt, and let him be dispatched. I'll send her to you. Exit face. Well, sir. Your aunt, her grace, will give you audience presently on my suit, and the captain's word that you did not eat your gag in any contempt of her highness. Unbinds his eyes. Not I, in troth, sir. Enter doll, like the queen of fairy. Here she is come, down your knees and wriggle. She has a stately presence. Dapper kneels and shuffles towards her. Good. Yet nearer, and bid God save you. Madam and your aunt and my most gracious aunt god save your grace nephew we thought to have been angry with you but that sweet face of yours hath turned the tide and made it flow with joy that ebbed of love arise and touch our velvet gown the skirts and kiss em so let me now stroke that head much nephew shalt thou win much shalt thou spend much shalt thou give away much shalt thou lend aside ay much indeed why do you not thank her grace i cannot speak for joy see the kind wretch your grace's kinsman right give me the bird here is your fly in a purse about your neck cousin wear it and feed it about this day seven night on your right wrist Open a vein with a pin, and let it suck but once a week, till then you must not look on't. No, and kinsman, bear yourself worthy of the blood you come on. Her grace would have you eat no more wool-sack pies, nor dagger fromity. Nor break his fast in heaven and in hell. She's with you everywhere, nor play with costermongers at mum-chant's tray-trip. God make you rich, when, as your aunt has done it, but keep the gallantest company and the best games. Yes, sir. 
Gleek and Primero, and what you get be true to us. By this hand I will. You may bring a thousand pound before to-morrow night, if but three thousand be stirring, and you will. I swear I will, then. Your fly will learn you all games. Have you done there? Your grace will command him no more duties. No, but come and see me often. I may chance to leave him three or four hundred chests of treasure, and some twelve thousand acres of fairyland, if he game well and comely with good gamesters. There's a kind aunt. Kiss her departing part. But you must sell your forty mark a year now. Ay, sir, I mean. Oh, give it away, pox aunt. I'll give mine aunt. I'll go and fetch the writings. Exit. Tis well. Away. Re enter Faith. Where's Subtle? Here. What news? Drugger is at the door. Go take his suit and bid him fetch a parson presently. Say he will marry the widow. Thou shalt spend a hundred pound by the service. Exit Subtle. Now, Queen Dole, have you packed up all? Yes. And how do you like the lady pliant? A good dull innocent. Re enter Subtle. Here's your Hieronymo's cloak and hat. Give me them. And the ruff too? Yes. I'll come to you presently. Exit. Now he has gone about his project, doll, I told you of, for the widow. Tis direct against our articles. Well, we will fit him, wench. Hast thou gulled her of her jewels or her bracelets? No, but I will do it. Soon, at night, my dolly, when we are shipped and all our goods aboard, eastward for Ratcliffe, we will turn our course to Brainford westward, if thou sayest the word, and take our leaves of this o'erweening rascal this peremptory face. Content, I'm weary of him. Thou'st cause, when the slave will run a wiving doll against the instrument that was drawn between us. I'll pluck his bird as bare as I can. Yes, tell her she must by any means address some present to the cunning man, make him amends for wronging his art with her suspicion. Send a ring, or chain of pearl. She'll be tortured else extremely in her sleep, say, and have strange things come to her. Wilt thou? Yes. My fine flitter mouse, my bird of the night. We'll tickle it at the pigeons when we have all, and may unlock the trunks and say, This is mine and thine, and thine and mine. They kiss, re enter face. What now, a billing? Yes, a little exalted in the good passage of our stock affairs. Drugger has brought his parson. Take him in, Subtle, and send Nab back again to wash his face. I will. And shave himself. Exit. If you can get him. You are hot upon it, face, whate'er it is. A trick that Doll shall spend ten pound a month by. Re-enter Subtle. Is he gone? The chaplain waits you in the hall, sir. I'll go bestow him. Exit. He'll now marry her instantly. He cannot yet. He is not ready. Dear Doll, cousin her of all thou canst. To deceive him is no deceit but justice. That would break such an inextricable tie as ours was. Let me alone to fit him. Re-enter face. Come, my venturers, you have packed up all? Where be the trunks? Bring forth. Here. Let us see them. Where's the money? Here, in this. Mammon's ten pound, eight score before, the brethren's money, this. Druggers and drappers. What paper's that? The jewel of the waiting maids, that stole it from her lady to know certain. If she should have precedence of her mistress? Yes. What box is that? The fishwives' rings, I think, and the alewives' single money. It's not dull. Yes, and the whistle that the sailor's wife brought you to know, and her husband were with Ward. We'll wet it to-morrow, and our silver beakers and tavern cups. Where be the French petticoats, and girdles and hangers? Here in the trunk, and the boats of lawn. Is Drugger's damask there, uh, in the tobacco? Yes. Give me the keys. Why are you the keys? No matter, doll, because we shall not open them before he comes. "'Tis true. You shall not open them, indeed, nor have them forth, do you see? Not forth, Dole. "'No. "'No, my smock rampart. The right is, my master knows all, has pardoned me, and he will keep them. "'Doctor, tis true. You look for all your figures. I sent for him, indeed. Wherefore, good partners, both he and she be satisfied, for here determines the indentured tripart betwixt subtle, doll, and face. All I can do is to help you o'er the wall or the backside, or lend you a sheet to save your velvet gown, doll. Here will be officers presently, bethink you of some course suddenly to escape the dock, 
for thither you will come else. Loud knocking. Hark you, thunder. You are a precious fiend. Without. Open the door. Dole, I am sorry for thee in faith, but hearest thou? It will go hard, but I will place thee somewhere. Thou shalt have my letter to Mistress Almo. Hang you. Or Madame Cesarin. Pox upon you, rogue, would I had but time to beat thee. Subtle, let's know where you set up next. I will send you a customer now and then for old acquaintance. What new course have you? Rogue, I'll hang myself, that I may walk a greater devil than thou, and haunt thee in a flock-bed in the buttery. Exeunt. Scene three. An outer room in the same. Enter Lovewit in the Spanish dress, with the parson. Loud knocking at the door. What do you mean, my masters? Without. Open your door. Cheaters, bawds, conjurers. Or we'll break it open. What warrant have you? Warrant enough, sir, don't knock, if you will not open it. Is there an officer there? Yes, two or three for failing. Have but patience, and I will open it straight. Enter face, as butler. Sir, have you done? Is it a marriage perfect? Yes, my brain. Off with your rough and cloak, then. Be yourself, sir. Down with the door. Slight, ding it open. Opening the door. Hold, hold, gentlemen. What means this violence? Mammon, Surly, Castrol, Ananias, Tribulation, and Officers rush in. Where is this collier? And my captain face? These day owls. That are birding in men's purses. Madam suppository. Doxy, my sister. Locusts of the foul pit. Profane as Bell and the dragon. Worse than the grasshoppers or the lice of Egypt. Good gentlemen, hear me. Are you officers and cannot stay this violence? Keep the peace. Gentlemen, what is the matter? Whom do you seek? The chemical Cosadar. And the Captain Pandar. The nun, my sister. Madam Rabbi. Scorpions and caterpillars. Fewer at once, I pray you. One after another, gentlemen, I charge you, by virtue of my staff. They are the vessels of pride, lust, and the cart. Peace, Deacon Ananias. The house is mine here, and the doors are open. If there be any such persons as you seek for, use your authority, search on, O God's name. I am but newly come to town, and finding this tumult about my door, to tell you true, it somewhat mazed me, till my man here, fearing my more displeasure, told me he had done somewhat an insolent part. Let out my house, be like presuming on my known aversion from any heir of the town while there was sickness to a doctor and a captain who what they are or where they be he knows not are they gone you may go in and search sir mammon ananias and tribulation go in here i find the empty walls worse than i left them smoked a few cracked pots and glasses and a furnace the ceiling filled with posies of the candle and madam with a dildo writ all the walls only one gentlewoman I met here, that is within, that said she was a widow. Oi, that's my sister. I'll go thump her. Where is she? Goes in. And should have married a Spanish count, but he, when he came to it, neglected her so grossly that I, a widower, am gone through with her. How? Have I lost her then? Were you the don, sir? Good faith now. She does blame you extremely, and says you swore, and told her you had taken the pains to dye your beard, and umber o'er your face, borrowed a suit and ruff, all for her love, and then did nothing. What an oversight, and want of putting forward, sir, was this. Well fair an old harquebusier yet, could prime his powder, and give fire and hit, all in a twinkling. Re-enter Mammon. The whole nest are fled. What sort of birds were they? A kind of chuffs or thievish daws, sir, that have picked my purse of eight score and ten pounds within these five weeks, besides my first materials and my goods that lie in the cellar, which I am glad they have left, I may have home yet. Think you so, sir? Aye, 
by order of law sir but not otherwise not mine own stuff sir i can take no knowledge that they are yours but by public means if you can bring certificate that you were galled of them or any formal writ out of a court that you did cozen yourself i will not hold them i'd rather lose them that you shall not sir by me in troth upon these terms they are yours what should they have been sir turned into gold all no i cannot tell it may be they should what then what a great loss in hope have you sustained not i the commonwealth has ay and he would have built the city new and made a ditch about it of silver should have run with cream from hogsden that every sunday in moorsfield the yonkers and tits and tomboys should have fed on gratis i will give him mount the turnip cart and preach the end of the world within these two months surly what in a dream must i needs cheat myself with that same foolish vice of honesty come let us go and hearten out the rogues that face all mark for mine if e'er i meet him if i can hear of him sir i'll bring your word unto your lodgings for in truth they were strangers to me i thought them honest as myself sir exaunt mammon and surly re-enter ananias and tribulation tis well the saints shall not lose all yet go and get some carts for what my zealous friends to bear away the portion of the righteous out of this den of thieves what is that portion the goods sometimes the orphans that the brethren bought with their silver pence what those in the cellar the knight sir mammon claims i do defy the wicked mammon so do all the brethren thou profane man i ask thee with what conscience thou canst advance that idol against us but have the seal were not the shillings numbered that made the pounds were not the pounds told out upon the second day of the fourth week in the eighth month upon the table dormant the year of the last patience of the saints six hundred and ten mine earnest vehement botcher and deacon also i cannot dispute with you but if you get you not away the sooner i shall confute you with a cudgel sir be patient ananias oh, i am strong and will stand up well girt against an host that threaten god in exile i shall send you to amsterdam to your cellar i will pray there against thy house may dogs defile thy walls and wasps and hornets breed beneath thy roof this seat of falsehood and this cave of cousinage exaunt ananias and tribulation enter drugger another too not i sir i am no brother beat him <coughs> away you hairy nicholas do you talk exit drugger no this was abel drugger good sir go to the parson and satisfy him tell him all is done he stayed too long a washing of his face the doctor he shall hear of him at westchester and of the captain tell him at yarmouth or some good port town else lying for a wind exit parson if you can get off the angry child now sir enter kestrel dragging in his sister come on you 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 have matched most sweetly have you not did i not say i would never have you tapped but by a dubbed boy to make you a lady tom slight you are a mammet oh i could touse you now death mun you marry with a pox you lie boy as sound as you and i'm aforehand with you and on come will you quarrel i will phase you sirrah why do you not buckle to your tools odds light this is a fine old boy as e'er i saw what do you change your copy now proceed here stands my dove stoop at her if you dare slight i must love him i cannot choose a faith and i should be hanged for it sister i protest i honour thee for this match oh do you so sir yes and thou canst take tobacco and drink old boy 
I'll give her five hundred pound more to her marriage than her own state. Fill a pipe full, Jeremy. Yes, but go in and take it, sir. We will. I will be ruled by thee in any thing, Jeremy. Slight, thou art not hide-bound. Thou art a jovey boy. Come, let us in, I pray thee, and take our whiffs. Whiff in with your sister, brother boy. Exaunt Castrol and Dame Pliant. That master that had received such happiness by a servant, in such a widow, and with so much wealth, were very ungrateful if he would not be a little indulgent to that servant's wit, and help his fortune, though with some small strain of his own candour. Advancing. Therefore, gentlemen, and kind spectators, if I have outstripped an old man's gravity, or strict canon, think what a young wife and a good brain may do, stretch age's truth sometimes, and crack it too. Speak for thyself, knave. So I will, sir. Advancing to the front of the stage. Gentlemen, my part a little fell in this last scene, yet twas decorum, and though I am clean got off from subtle, surly, mammon, doll, hot anias, dapper, drugger, all with whom I traded, yet I put myself on you, that are my country, and this pelf which I have got, if you do quit me, rest to feast you often, and invite new guests. Exeunt. End of Act 5. End of The Alchemist by Ben Johnson